Blog Talk Radio. You're tuned in to N5D Radio, the next dimension in radio, where we bring you the hottest, in-depth, spiritual, metaphysical, esoteric conversations and news. Get ready for spirit, body, and mind to expand in three, two, one, 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 one. Namaste and welcome to N5D Radio, coming to you from the 99% Quartz Crystal Sands of Sarasota, Florida. I'm your host, Greg Prescott from N5D.com, and tonight we're going to be raising the vibration of the planet, galaxy, and universe. Speaking of tonight, we have astrologer Jim Delacoli, also known as Panther Jim 1995 on YouTube, returning as our guest. And he'll be taking your calls, but we would like to request that you keep your calls focused on astrology questions instead of personal horoscopes so we can make this a learning experience for all of us. So without further ado, I'd like to bring in Jim Delacoli. Hi, Jim. Happy New Year and welcome back to N5D Radio. Hey, Greg. Happy New Year to you and I'm glad to be back. I appreciate the invite. I'm always, I always look forward to uh, chatting with you. Me too, definitely. Now, uh, Jim was our first guest of the night on the N5D New Year's Eve extravaganza, and we talked for about 30 minutes about 2015 and beyond, but because there's so much we needed to cover, we created a show for tonight. So before we really jump into it, I'm going to ask you a few basic astrology questions to kind of set the tone for everything we're going to be getting into later on. So can you tell our listeners what is the importance of astrology? Astrology is uh, the effect that the heavens have um on us, on the planet, and we, everything that we, um, all the energies we take into consideration from our perspective on Earth as to how they are surrounding us in the heavens above, and uh, what they found uh, throughout human history, thousands and thousands and thousands of years of studies been done that certain planets uh, can cover certain parts of the body, certain energies, and you know have effects on the human race. Uh, as it um, continues uh, its time on Earth here. So uh, astrology itself is kind of like the gods giving us the messages or letting us um, understand that there there is a, a method, there is a way, and there is a process. And that if we just take the time, we can study that, figure it out, and, and really understand where it is we are, where it is we've been, and then where it is, of course, the ultimate question, where it is can we take this? Now, there are different styles or types of uh, astrology, and you, you, you basically uh, focus in on one of them. Um, can you basically just say what the differences are of these astrology styles? Yeah, yeah. there's uh, 12. When we look at the backdrop of the heavens above, there's 12 different signs that they've uh, the mankind has divided the sky into, and that's the signs. Um, Aries starts it out for us in the northern hemisphere. It's the beginning, and then... Pisces ends it, and I do the Placidus system, um, Western Placidus. It allows for um, the houses to be of different size when I run your natal chart, and I find that way more effective. Um, so say you're born in the in the winter, Greg, and you're like about at the Tropic of uh, Cancer. You're that far away at, um, from the equator that you're not going to have 12 hours of sunlight. So kind of what uh, the Placidus allows is the house will be bigger um, in one section of the chart, and then, of course, opposite of that. And what I find is that when I talk about events happening, planets come to that house because it's way more effective. Um, I'm not ditching the, the Eastern astrology. I'm not ditching the Koch system. Um, but I, I have found that in, in my life uh, that, that that's been most effective. The Koch system just says every sign 30 degrees. We're going to make, you, make each house 30 degrees. Um whereas Eastern astrology focuses a little more on the moon than the sun. Uh, I find them both effective. All three of them are very effective, but the one that resonates with me is the one I go with because I think intuition is a big part of astrology. I agree. Um, how important are astrological signs in any given relationship? I, I think you've got to look at uh, them as being extremely important as they they are kind of the backdrop of the individuals where the sun fell Um in the one's natal chart, time of the year they were born. And so they're going to take those characteristics, and that's kind of how they're going to like operate. And it's kind of the agreement they've made uh, on their way here that I'm going to be this sign because this is going to be my most effective way to get the lessons done. 
um, that I need to do or need to take care of this life. So it, it's very effective, uh, but you also got to consider that there's, you know, uh, all the other planets there and, and you know, the moon uh, and, and Pluto and, you know, of course, the Venus and Mars and Mercury, I mean, they all have effects. So you just don't want to just find somebody's sun sign and then say, oh, that doesn't go well with me, I'm leaving, because they may have other planets that work very well with your chart. So you really want to consider find, getting a chart run before you dump somebody or you seriously uh, consider somebody. But you can also get a basic idea, though, say – you and I are both uh, air signs, Libras, um, and we, yep. we get along best with fellow Libras or fire signs, which my daughter is a fire sign. So yes. you can get a yes. general understanding, if nothing else. But like you said, you need to really look at everything else that's going on and then make a comparison because there might you might have a, a sign that's an earth sign, for example, that mm-hmm. on on the face value it might be incompatible but you have all these other things that line up, and it would be an amazing relationship. That's what you're saying, basically, right? Yeah, and uh, I'm a prime example. I'm a, a fire sun sign and an earth moon sign, and my wife uh, is a earth sun sign. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm an air sun sign. Sorry. Uh, yes. And my wife is an earth sun sign and an air moon sign. And so, moon uh, represents in astrology your past or what you know or what kind of what you understand so to have that makeup you know works extremely well because where i'm where i'm going she's been and where she's where she's trying to go i've been so we can help each other and the the draw is there and it's pretty amazing when you find somebody that your son matches their moon and their moon matches your son it's pretty amazing the connection right off the i mean just right away that happens Mm -hmm. that's a great balancing act right now um right there Mm -hmm. now um Mm -hmm. I, I firmly believe that, you know, the the day, the hour, the minute, and the geographical location of our solar system and our physical incarnation ties into our soul ca- contracts through astrology. Do you believe that? Absolutely. I I think we pick it right down to the very hospital we're born in. I, I uh, at the time, the day. I, I think we pick all that. I think it has everything mm-hmm. to do with everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I do too, and I think that even the not just the second but the millisecond even goes into fractals of determining uh, personality as well. Because you can look at identical twins, and uh, even though they're born seconds or minutes apart, they're still a slightly, very, albeit very slightly, different from one another. Absolutely. I mean, you find their trends in life are you know congruent, but that there is one handles things a little more aggressive or one's a little more passive. You know, you, if you really watch them, it's interesting to watch. I, I have twins that uh, family that I'm close to that the twin boys and they, um, they're like just the opposite of each other, if that makes sense. And it's pretty amazing yeah. to watch them. And it's, they've really taught me a lot um, as I've studied in astrology, just how, like you said, a few minutes apart can change things and, and how you can see the as above, so below with those two. I mean, it's, a, it's just amazing. Mm-hmm. Now, can a person get an accurate chart reading if he or she doesn't know the exact time of their birth? They get close. Um, they, um, you know, when people say that they don't have the exact time, I, I try to grab the information of date and, of course, location, and then we try to talk about things. I try to find highs and lows for them, and really, you can get pretty close to their time by just finding out when they cycled uh, through the Saturn cycle, which is a 29-year cycle. So that's how I kind of look and try to figure out when they were born. Uh, because if you look at a, a chart, a natal chart, Greg, that it's 12 houses, and so every day then would each house would uh, be equivalent of two hours of the sun traveling through um, that mm-hmm. natal chart. So you'll break that down into two-hour segments, and um, you can pretty quickly then find – um, where those planets, uh, where the sun laid, and then everything else, you can just plop right into the chart. And it's fairly easy to do, but you want to make sure you trust the individual that's, that you're, that, that uh, is, is trying to find that time because um, the intimate questions a lot of times have to be asked, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah it's funny because, um, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, I uh, asked my mother, what time was I born? She's like, I don't remember. <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> was it AM or PM? I don't know. Was it? <laughs> then I asked my dad. He had no idea. So finally, I went oh, to the Lord. city hall, 
<laughs> yeah, went to the city hall and found out it was 5:20 a.m. So maybe that does that have anything to do? I've you know for the most part of my life I've been a morning person, and and because oh, I was yeah. born in the morning, does that have something to do with it? A- absolutely. Wherever I that's one of the first things I look at. What time are you born? And if they're living in the same hemisphere, right, and and kind of in the same time zone, I watch them because wherever the sun fell, that's going to be like. That's like you and your shiny moment. You the, you still get that every day. That energy should come to you at that time. So if, if yeah, if you were born early in the morning, then that's going to be a time that should be very productive for you um, mm-hmm. as you live this life. So now now some people might, uh, and I'm going to use myself for an example. Some people have triples on their birth chart. I'm a I'm a triple Libra. So mm-hmm. does that mean I'm really out of balance, or that I'm constantly seeking balance? Yeah, I think that um, what happens is, is we talked about, uh, you know, we agree to a certain, all right, we're going to learn these lessons in this life before we get here. And just something that you were going to work on, Greg, is a, the Libra message of it, it's not just seeking balance, but it's truly to include, make sure you're included in every equation. And then when you include yourself maybe to a too great of degree, then include others and so because you had three uh you decided to put three of the major planets or, or uh, chart points in the sign of libra that that tells me that libra is going to be it's going to be big for you about finding people that you resonate with and then just truly and, and clearly bounce off what you believe and let them bounce off what they believe and then that balance mm-hmm. comes and and it, i've known you for what's been two years a little over two years and I can yes. tell you, you definitely. I mean, you your Libra energy just oozes out. So uh, I think you're doing that absolutely. <laughs> oh, I don't know cool. about youth, but I know you're doing it now. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do. I, I do feel like I am constantly, always, going one way or the other about finding that balance. You know, I'll I'll go overboard in one direction to overcompensate for the other direction that I'm not finding the balance in, and I end up yes. teeter tottering a lot. You know, well, I've been doing that, that with explains my, with work. Go yeah, ahead. right. No, that I've explains been, been we were talking with work. earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were talking earlier about you. Um, you and I both had the same problem where we go put everything into, and it's almost like we take too much on, and then we have to get away from it and take a just mm-hmm. a break, you know, to get it. And then we, then we get recharged and we get back, and that's kind of that Libra message is. All right, are you trying to do too much? And and then the other message that you know I, I'll throw to you because I I always tell myself is all right, where who do I have around me that can help me with this instead of me trying to do it all to make it easier on everybody else? Who can help me? And that's the message kind of that we need to incorporate a little more is we probably surrounded ourselves with something or somebody that can help. Maybe we should let them, you know, in and help if that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense because um, I was telling you before the show started um, how Michelle and I met at the uh, Return to Atlantis conference here in Sarasota, and I was running around with like like a chicken with his head cut off. I know it's a horrible analogy, but um, <laughs> I, I just really needed help. And uh, Michelle just had, we just kept running into each other, and uh, and I asked her if she could help me out there, and she's been helping ever since, and I'm really really grateful for that. You know, right. we've been together since ever since then, and uh, she's been a huge part of my life in helping to alleviate some of the stuff. And even one of the guys in the in the chat room right now, Larry Lockin, um, he's helping me to distribute the articles on uh, certain social networking throughout Facebook, um, throughout all the groups, and that's a huge help to me too because these are all things that I would take on myself. And you know, there comes a point in time where you realize you just can't do it all by yourself. No, and and then you get that Libra energy that comes in, and you want it right, and um, you know, and so you're going to put it out because you're like they got to understand this. I want to make sure they understand it. So you're doing all that <laughs> as well, and uh-huh. and you know, I'm not going to say it's perfectionism, but I, I will say that uh, you want to put it out in a way where it's easily understood, or it you know it, it can get to the most amount of people. So you have that you're battling with, and uh, as you try to do all the, the things you're trying to do, so perfect. Yeah, that's well well said. Um, now, just to go in a little different direction, how are those in power using astrology against us? We have um, we've never had a better time for self empowerment or creation um, that I've looked back and and it, it, it's going to go back to the twenty five just under twenty six thousand year cycle. Um, mm-hmm. 
So the last time we had the opportunity that we're looking at right now was almost 26,000 years ago. And, and what's happening is all of the slower-moving planets that rule um, the later, the latter signs where uh, you complete things and, and you, you, know, you assess them and you um, say, what do I need, what do I truly need, because you can see that now, and then what, do I, what can I move away from and what's not right. And we're, we're to that time, that karmic end time of this is, yes, this is clearly what is good for me and this works uh, through the test of time and no, this doesn't work for me and this doesn't work. We're at that time. And so they built up, um, it's made me believe, and understand how civilizations end. We get to this critical time when creation is everywhere. It's in the moment. Everybody can access it. Everybody can do it. It's just a matter of are you saving the space and the time and, and taking that time and, and making the most of it. What they do at the end of civilization, if you look at it, Greg, we're, there's less and less and less and less of, uh, like we're doing a radio show over the Internet. There's there's less uh, things truly being able to st- be documented, I guess is how I'll put it. Um, on a mm-hmm. tablet or in some some physical form, and I think that's by design. When we get late and when the human race is getting ready to, to flip and, and move into something else, um, and during this time they they keep you busy. They give you all these gadgets and all. We were talking about all the entertainment going on uh, prior to getting on the show here. So they fill your time with just things that don't matter, and um, they take your creation from you by doing that. Uh, and then they use it. Uh, you and I were talking about that as well. And so we're at this end time where we, we can pretty much create what we want when we want, but we've been so distracted that we're, we're, you know it's almost like we're there's a huge battle that's being waged within us as well as on the outside of us, uh, outside of us of you know cre- truly creating what matters. And and so what you know you've been doing this. I, I, I've listened to you. I've ch- been seeing your web page. Listened to your other shows. And you've been trying to do this, and I've been trying to do it. Just empower yourself. It's time. The planets are helping us. The energy's there. Um, you're you're seeing things that have never been seen before. Or they've been hidden, and now they're out in the open. It's time to wake up and truly see what's going on. And they know this as well. They're they're doing this against us because they know if they can keep us, then the creation they can get from this time and space. It will catapult them, and so that's the battle we're waging right now, in my opinion. Now, now you mentioned the the twenty six thousand year cycle. June below Melchizedek believes our planet goes through twelve thousand some odd year cycles of masculine and feminine energies. Yes. If that's yes. the case, it seems we're at the end of the masculine energy of war, greed, and power, and should be entering another, you know, twelve thirteen thousand year period of a more nurturing feminine energy. What is your opinion? I, I am exactly of that opinion, and I believe that um, we've up already we're at the end of the masculine. But I think that the end of of uh, one uh, period of time kind of meshes and melts into the next period of time because it mm-hmm. does linger. And so it's not like we say, all right, today's the day and it's done. So I do think the feminine's coming, and it's been coming, and so we're in that time. But we've got to that helps rid, I guess the bad or the evil of what the masculine created and, and didn't handle. So, yes, I, I do believe we're flipping into that, and I, I do think the time is now. And, and I actually think we're in the feminine time. I think it was ninety between 96 and 98 it started, if that makes sense. Well, we're starting to see, you know, even in the political realm, which was predominantly uh, masculine, we're starting to see, you know, lots of lots of uh, feminine uh, the, uh, women appear. And here we have Hillary that will be running the um, – in the upcoming election, most likely against Jeb Bush in a controlled election, but um, yeah. we're we're seeing that uh, more predominantly throughout all areas, all sectors of business as well. Yes. So. Yes, and yeah. um, you know, there's good and bad with all of that, and so what'll happen is is you know the that'll continue for a period of time, and then it'll have to write itself to a degree of like, is this too much or is it not enough? Mm-hmm. And, you know, is, is it best for the human race? And all that'll get settled in time as this this unfolds. But that is exactly what's going on. So what we end up seeing, folks, uh, everyone listening, um, the masculine, it really boils down to war, war, greed, power, and, you know, all these these masculine energies. And that's how we end up collapsing at the end of this cycle. And then the feminine, like, like Jim was saying, blends in the feminine energy. And then, but what happens with the feminine energy is you end up with over-nurturing, famine, and starvation and that's not good either you know you end up with catastrophes catastrophes in both sectors so 
obviously the, the, the lesson to be learned is balance. We have to find a balance between these energies to uh, really make this work. Yes, and, and to know when one needs to be empowered and the other needs to be, you know, stand back. I mean, that, and that's where the balance comes. And isn't it funny that you and I are Libras and it's, I know you and I, I've talked to you enough that we, I think we battled this back and forth um, in many, our many lifetimes. So I think we understand it more than most and understand why both have to be there, but um, neither one of them too much uh, for any period of time. Mm-hmm. Now there's a lot of controversy about when the age of Aquarius either begins or has began. What's your opinion? We, we've changed time so much. I, I always look back to the 96 to 98. I think that was about when we started that transition over into um, the age of Aquarius. Um, if you look at the, the true uh, node point, I, I think that was really the point when that we did that, Greg. And that's my opinion mm-hmm. on my studies. And you know, mm-hmm. I, we, we 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 may have callers that will sit here and argue for a while or discuss it and not argue, but. Um, it just felt like that was right to me as well. I mean, there's a lot of things. I'm an Aquarius ascendant, and there's a lot of things I did around that time that, um, and I wasn't doing astrology then, um, that really just it was in the soul level, and it was just I couldn't stop, and I started a bunch of things. And, and as I look back over that, I thought, wow, that maybe that is what happened to, and that is when we truly did tra- uh, transfer over into the age of Aquarius. So. But you have people saying it was in the 60s and 70s and yep. 80s and 90s, and you know, so we, it's all over the board. And it doesn't help that mm-hmm. we didn't accurately keep records uh, of timing of events, or you know, because you you and I could find whatever we want if we look if we research, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I've seen uh, predictions, like you said, from as early as the 1960s, anywhere through mm-hmm. like I think three four hundred years from now. Um, yeah. So, yes. but really, it, it really boils into uh, down to a, uh, a blending of energies uh, as we transit out of Pisces and into Aquarius. So, regardless of yes. when it is or was or has been, it's it's going to be a, a gradual thing. It's not going to happen like you wake up tomorrow. Oh my God, it's the age Aquarius. You're not going to know. You're not going to see it like no, that. No, no. Exactly. The, the overwhelming energies are going to be coming in more down the road. Just not right yet. Yeah, so it, it's a twenty five hundred year cycle. So I mean, you're you know you're kind of just sitting there, okay, you know. What's a, so. Yeah, what, what's a hundred years, right? <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I mean, that's nothing yeah. in the picture. You know, so no. So there is a new moon in Aquarius on January twentieth. Uh, we actually have two of them this year. Yes, and I, I wanted to talk about that too. That I find that very interesting. Mm-hmm. But before we get mm-hmm. into that, can you explain the difference and significance of a new moon? versus a full moon to our listeners. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean it, I'll mean, simplify it all the way down to when you look in the sky during a new moon at night, there's nothing. I mean, we have darkness, and, and that's where creation, uh, in my opinion, that's where it happens. Uh, it needs a darkness to uh, kind of figure out, all right, who am I going to be, what am I going to be, and then light gets shed on it. Uh, and Think of the sun heating a seed, and then the ground, the earth warms, and then that seed starts to germinate. On the new moon, you do just that. You plant the seed. You tell the universe, I'm putting my ideas, my beliefs into the universe, and it's time. I, I, I'm ready to grow, and, and it's only a seed. I'm not sure what it's going to end up being, but I'm, I'm open to, and here's what I feel we can do. And you kind of leave it open. Uh, when we get to the full moons, of course, you look at night, and then we pretty much have light at day and light at night as the moon and the sun are exactly opposite. As the sun sets, the moon rises and it stays full in the sky all the way through the whole the, the whole um, nighttime process. And so what we do then is it, things are illuminated and it's action time. You want to, because the moon and the sun are as far apart as they can be, any action taken, uh, the moon's where you're trying to go. Sun, uh, I'm sorry, the moon's where you've been, the sun's where you're trying to go. Um, with them uh, separated in the sky and we're in the middle, when you take action, you'll know if I've done this before or no, this is something new. And so you realize, all right, I'm heading in a direction when you, you know, when the, the the circumstances become such that you're like, I haven't had these results, you know you're moving forward. If the results have been something that you know, uh, know or they're, they're the cyclical, you're like, all right, I've done this, I'm repeating the past, what do I need to change or, or how can I change or, or is change mm-hmm. necessary? So we want action time during the full moon and we want to really meditate and um, 
uh, kind of put your ideas or beliefs or plant the seeds of who you are, who you want to become, out to the universe, say, I'm ready. It's time for growth. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people do that, too. When they put their crystals out, they'll set the intentions with the crystals during a full moon. So, yeah, I can definitely see people, how that, that works and that cycle. Now, we do have a uh, new moon, like I mentioned, in Aquarius, the first of two that are in Aquarius. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one comes in on January 20th, I believe. Uh, can you tell us yes, the, the significance of that? It's the last of what we've had was four zero-degree new moons. We talked a little bit about the other night on your New Year's Eve mm-hmm. show, which was wonderful, by the way. Um, Thank you. It, and Aquarius is that, that sign of, of us kind of – it is the sign of the rebel, but it's also the sign of the individual that is seeking the truth. And so they're gonna, the reason they give it the rebel uh, term is that it seeks the truth at all with with everything it has it wants to just go right to the truth no politically correct no you know sensitivity you know the sensitivity is is lessened here you're just trying to find the truth and and what i like about aquarius is it takes us into tomorrow um with us not really having uh, an idea of where this thing could possibly go so miracles are everywhere the opportunity to skip five or six steps and, and catapult yourself is here when Aquarius comes because it's what we believe based on where we are at this time in our um, in our uh, cycle, our evolutionary cycle, that we can go. And, and you kind of just put it out there and you want to move forward. Because there's going to be two new moons, we're going to have one at zero degrees, um, which is definitely new beginnings, and we're going to have one at the very last degree of 29 Aquarius Um on the 18th of February, that there's a chance here to, uh, it's not going to see itself through, but there's a chance to put it out in the universe and let's move and I just want the truth uh, and let the miracles, you know, in. There's a chance to get both ends of a lot of, uh, and a lot of the processes in life or a lot of your evolutionary uh, cycle here. You can find, start new beginnings and end things that can be ma- almost magical, and that's what I'm hoping happens here because Aquarius mm-hmm. likes to work out of the blue. And uh, it's like a lightning bolt coming in and just changing its environment immediately. And if, as long as you're open and you're looking for everything, the Aquarius works extremely well for the individual. Now, um, interestingly, and you touched upon it, we both kind of did, uh, next month's new moon is also in Aquarius. How often do new moons stay in the same house for two consecutive months? It's that's it's rare. It's about every three, three and a half years that that happens. But I've never seen one line itself up in zero degrees because we had a zero degrees um, Scorpio in late October. We had a zero degrees Sagittarius in late November, zero degrees Capricorn right at the solstice here on the 21st of December. And then we had to, this Aquarius one on the 20th of January. And then, of course, we're going to have that completion uh, at the end of Aquarius, the sign of Aquarius. Uh, in in uh, 18th of February, so it doesn't happen often. I've not, I can't, still can't find it back in the ephemeris. Anything like this happening where it ends in Aquarius, where we are, the potential is to be left better than you were found, as these two moons come and they're on the horizon for us to plant the seed. That's pretty big, then. <laughs> if you can't find I it think anywhere it's in the ephemeris, yeah, yeah, and my ephemeris goes back to 1900. So wow. Um, and I, I couldn't Google anything that would give me that information. So if somebody out there has it, I'd love to find out when it happened. Mm-hmm. I'm looking in the chat room. We have a chat room that goes on below uh, the uh, the show. And uh, mm-hmm. Andrew Fisher from uh, Nature of Reality uh, show, um, he was talking about, and David Icke mentions a lot about this too, how the uh, moon is an artificial construct. Does that tie into any any how or any way in astrology, whether it is or isn't? I have the moon um, latent Taurus, last degree Taurus, um, at the very bottom of my chart uh, natally, and um, I, I never really considered that till about four or five years ago, and I actually think that that is absolutely the truth now, and um, mm-hmm. because in the in moon astrology is your past, it's kind of your heritage, it's what you know, and so you know when you come here. Very good to disguise that with that, if that makes sense. Um, if they're going to fill you with what they want you to know or what they want you to remember, and then that's what you take, then uh, it makes all the sense in the world. And that, that just hit me like a ton of bricks uh, three or four years ago, and I've been trying to figure that out ever since, and I do think that's what happened. If you look at the moon and its cycle, it's pretty constant, and 
it doesn't rotate. So that tells me the two things that, that that's not natural. It's not in line with the rest of the the planets and that we're dealing with here in the universe. Because either their ecli- their uh, path, the ecliptic is is off a little bit, or um, it spins, and and we really don't have either with that. And so I do think that 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 does then raise the issue of is that real? And and I'm telling you, Greg, it probably is uh, artificial. Mm. And I, I tend to lean that way too because you know everything in our solar system spins. This doesn't. Mm-hmm. Right. There's something not right about that, and um, we might touch on that a little bit later. Uh, now this year there is no new moon in Capricorn. Is there any relevance to that? I haven't looked at that. It's a good question. I'll have to do some research on that because we'll get it, but it won't be till 2016. So you're right about that. Um, mm-hmm. And as you know, Capricorn is where Pluto is, and uh, mm-hmm. We're dealing with a lot of uh, destruction in the uh, kind of systems and the Capricornian kind of um, uh, ruled areas of, of astrology. So that's extremely interesting. I did not look at that. I'll have to I'll have to do some study on that and get back with you via email or something. I, I, I apologize. Okay. I did not look at that. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, what's What's the message that's being sent to us with back to back new moons in Aquarius? I, I think that you better be ready for, I don't care what you know, because Aquarius teaches us this, I don't care what you know, how versed you are, how wise you are, Aquarius and its energies remind you that the universe has a way, and you've got to remember that miracles are and can can be and are everywhere. So the message is going to be that um, no matter what you've studied and, and, and how intelligent you are, how wise you are, be awake and be open for anything, and then when it comes... Be ready to look for your opportunity because it's there. So mm-hmm. anything you're too fixed on, Aquarius doesn't like. It doesn't like the Capricorn. Doesn't like the the, the fixtures and the you know the rigidity and the uh, restrictions. So I'm gonna tell you to no matter who you are, what you are, and what you know, be open to whatever comes because it's going to give you an opportunity for you to catapult uh, in your evolutionary stage. Why is Aquarius a uh, an air sign when it's the water bearer? It's interesting. They, um, I think it really like brings the information and uh, you know the way I've studied and, and what I've read and what I took from all that, Greg, is that it like pours the information to us from the universe. It's the it's the last of the air signs, so it's where we you know we are like very versed in the ability of the air sign, uh, sign which, is to, which is to communicate. So it, it's the dumping of the information onto the planet, so to speak. Um, mm-hmm. And so they said it was the water bearer. So he's carrying the water, but it's giving you the information, uh, the air part of that, um, which is to communicate. And it's not just with in verbal or you know um, written, but it's just how you understand things as well, how you look at things, and you know your approach needs to be wide open. That, that's why you find a lot of Aquarians are are um, kind of odd, so to speak. Um, they mm-hmm. just don't go with the flow. Well, and and and, and as we know, uh, water is H two O, which does have the air molecule in it as yes. well. Yes. Yep. Our uh, first of three Mercury retrogrades begins on January 21st through February 11th. Uh, what's going to go on that during that period? Yeah, um, Mercury. That is our first this year, and Mercury is when that goes retrograde. Everybody says, "Oh, don't don't sign this, don't do that," and and they're definitely right to a degree. Um, it's going to be in Aquarius where the two new moons are. So one of the things that I'm I'm doing myself, and uh, one of the things that I'm talking about is take that Aquarius, um, because uh, Mercury does rule one of the air signs, Gemini, so take that uh, retrograde in Aquarius and slow it down. I mean, there's going to be a lot that's going to happen to us in those two new moons, and, and you know, through March, we're going to have a lot go on. And What I want everybody to do with that, that retrograde Mercury is just where whatever you're drawn to, seek that. So if you're drawn to sleep, rest. If you're drawn to study a new subject do it if you're let that retrograde mercury just guide you and don't fight it do not fight do not you know um don't give up don't you know d- just be careful here just be open to where you're drawn and then do that but the, then the caution comes in as you're doing that 
And I know that sounds like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth, but with Aquarius, there's opportunities everywhere, and sometimes they're so obvious you won't see it. And and when it's retrograde, it's, that's when we've slowed this planet down. So the communication's trying to come. It might be in a dream. It might be through a new person. It might be through a, a meditation. It might be through something that somebody said on the radio, or you know, or it might be something you just just came to you. Don't minimize anything at that time. We also have uh, Mercury retrogrades coming up on May 18th through June 11th, and September 17th through October 9th. They they kind of all run in uh, elements a, a lot of times throughout the year as they fall. So they're going to fall in air signs all year. Um, and so I think that it's about the communication. The whole year is going to be about the communication. It's funny. We start with Aquarius. That's why I say I think we're going to get between – this new first new the new moon and the retrograde of Mercury and then the the next new the second new moon of Aquarius all the way through till we get to, uh, till the the last of the the um, retrograde Mercury's um, because that's where the eclipses are as well as in, in Libra and and Aries that I, I think really that we're going to get every all everything's going to be shown to us here in the next forty five days. Now the key, the 45 to, to 60 days. The key will be for us in the next two retrogrades is to, as we get a chance, we're going to take a take a deep breath and say, all right, now what are we going to do about it? And take that 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 Gem and that Taurus Gemini uh, retrograde and then that Libra retrograde, and that's when how we're going to fix some things. So I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity for us to change and fix uh, just what's going on and what information we are getting um, from the the you know the powers to be and from mm-hmm. our connection to whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Now, but the truth's uh, coming, moving, the truth's coming, Greg. Well, I, as you were saying too, the, the new moons in Aquarius is going to be something for people to really look out for in the next couple of months to see what's going on. Um, yes. Move, just moving forward ahead just a little, the spring yeah. equinox will bring us a solar eclipse in Pisces on March 20th of 2015. Yeah. What can you tell us about that? That's mm-hmm. the last degree of the last sign. So that tells me, and we t- we touched on this a little bit in, uh, on the show the other night, but that, that really tells me that it's right at that time when um, the the sun's now back on the equator and uh, it's coming back in the northern hemisphere, and this is the last chance degree of the last sign. So that tells me that if you're not seeing things, or as they truly are, you might struggle here. So I'm, I'm begging everybody to clean themselves up, open to their own intuition, and wake up because uh, there's there's never a better time to begin something than the, than uh, that first day of spring here. And um, that equinox is a time for you to understand that that sun, the giver of life, is back in the northern hemisphere here for all of us in the northern hemisphere. And it's going to be a huge opportunity for you to plant a seed that the sun can fairly quickly warm and do something with. And so I'm hoping that people clean themselves up, you know, right the ship and really get after what their intuition tells them is coming and what their intuition tells them that's going on. And, and I want to add this, Greg, if it's a great time for us, wouldn't you think that'd be a great time for who's ever in charge to try to do the same thing, if that makes sense? Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, everybody yeah. at the top of the uh, pyramid, every st- stinking one of them is either a master astrologer or converses with master astrologers because they know yes. right down to the T about every conjunction, everything that's going on in the skies, they know. Yes. And they plan everything yes. around it. Yes, and yep. and it's uh, the 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 thing that I watch them is they do things subtly or quietly, and so everybody's like, I told you nothing would happen, but they don't realize if they go back and look, a bill was signed or a treaty was mm-hmm. agreed to, or you know, and nobody understands that when you take it back, it was during that time. They just don't tell you that that's when they did it. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna uh, I see. Uh, my buddy uh, Andrew is on hold here in the in the queue, so I'm going to bring him aboard. Andrew, welcome back to N5D Radio. Do you have a question for Jim? Yes, a couple of them. First of all, Helene Lipson in that interview with Matt Kahn, Matt said that September 27th, which is the day of a full moon, will signal the time when one-third of humanity will resonate with 5D consciousness. Jim, is there anything in your research that suggests that is true? September 27th of 2015, Andrew. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Um, that is a uh, the full moon. 
Aries with Uranus total eclipse, that that definitely could be something because that's that's on the that's at the degree of it's definitely a time I'm looking at. It, it, we want to look at this first new moon and hopefully we can figure out what they planted versus what we planted for seeds, and then I think that's going to tell a lot. I'm uh, I'm looking. I don't know if you heard the show the other day, Greg, uh, Andrew, but I talked about financial collapses and possibly war in, in March through the end of uh, sign and Sun and Leo, which goes you know. Um, july august so i'm looking at those times as huge moments for all of us and and things come to a, a head at, at a full moon so that definitely is something that's on the radar of mine i just haven't you know i haven't looked at it to the nth degree yet so but it definitely is a possibility because it's at four degrees of aries okay and andrew bashago did mention sometime in 2015 and he learned about this through his days in the government time travel project pregnancy program that sometime in 2015 a lot it would be revealed that a lot of people in congress are cia operatives is there anything in your research in astrology where you can look at the uh signs and horoscopes and say well maybe this is when that will happen yeah uh, I'm, I'm looking at that new moon around uh, greg and i were just talking about because it's a last chance degree of the sign that rules all things hidden which <laughs> is uh, pisces and so i'm looking at that time for us to and i'm hoping everybody says Please, uh, I'm ready to be shown what's going on here. I'm ready to be shown, um, you know, what truly has happened over the last uh, 25,000 plus years, um, and and I can face it. And so I'm looking around that time, somewhere late February to early April, that something like that's going to really start to reveal. But I've also seen some people in Congress starting to rat each other out in the last couple of days. I don't remember names, but. Um, so I think we're already starting to see that, Andrew. If uh, I don't, I, I don't. I got the website up, but I don't want to play with it and not be able to talk on the phone. So, but there is some uh, Congress. Uh, I think congressmen out of Texas or somebody are going after Boehner, and then there's others that want full disclosure of um, UFOs and and possible alien life. And so there, I think we're starting to see that something's going on and there's separation starting to happen and that's what we need and now we need to all just dig in and make sure it happens okay one final uh, question uh santos Bonacci has talked about how every two million one hundred sixty thousand years the earth does another type of procession it does a full like um tilted procession where you can think of the earth as rolling around um and it takes two million one hundred sixty thousand years to do to do that Santos claims that's the reason we have ice ages, although I have reason to believe that that's a misconception. But um, do, does that factor into astrology in any way, that, that whole time period, two million plus your time period of the Earth, like rolling around on itself? Everything's cyclical, so uh, um, that could definitely be in the realm of possibilities because we're a 25,800-year cycle as we travel through um, the, the zodiac uh, as far as the um, Earth itself. So... That definitely any type of cycles, uh, I would definitely um, be on the side of that's definitely a possibility. And then I'd have to, of course, do the research. I've not done the two million one hundred. Would you say one hundred sixty thousand? Yes. Uh, cycle. I've not. I've not even looked at that. I'm, I'm still trying to get the twenty six thousand year cycles down. So, but that could definitely be a possibility. Okay, that's all my questions. Thank you for for taking my call, Greg. No, thanks. You're thanks welcome, Andrew. Take care, brother. You too. Okay, I'm going to bring on another caller. I believe this is Annette from the that's uh, talking in the chat room. Hi, Annette. Welcome to N5D Radio. Well, hello. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How I'm, are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing very well, thank you. You know, I actually got to speak to Jim last year, and, you know, it was such a wonderful experience, Jim. You are such a nice person. And I could I could talk to you literally for hours and hours and just, you know, soak it up. <laughs> well, you must be a leader. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, she must be. <laughs> well, you know, what I really, really want to ask you about is, um, well, you would advise me to go to astrology classes, which I'm starting shortly. And I am really okay. curious what your take is on the – you know, the the Planet X connection to astrology or, you know, is there something there that's, that's throwing, I, I don't know, is, do you, what do you think about the Planet X? Well, there's 12 signs and 10 planets. Mm -hmm. And that's led me to continue to question, where's, you know, this thing works so perfectly mathematically that 
we got to have two something else somewhere, and where are they? And um, mm-hmm. it would not surprise me. Uh, astrology is so much of as above, so below. It would not surprise me if there's not a planet or two that transits like us um, in an orbit that it really gives us few chances, maybe in the 25,000 year, 25,000, 26,000 year cycle, to find it or see it, if that makes sense. So um, I think there's two more, and I think that we haven't been given enough information, but I think that our intuition. I mean, just just yep. sitting and just just breaking it down and trying to keep it simple. I do think Planet X is out there, you know, and I do think it's uh, that we need to consider that. And I think we need to do studies to try to figure out just what's going on. So I, I do think the possibilities are there, absolutely. Absolutely, and I agree with you. That resonates with me so much. And thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, no, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. You have All a great right. evening. You too. Thank Thanks you for calling. calling. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's a, that's a great point about there being two other planets. I wonder if one was what they believed that Earth ended up being part of when it was blown up. Uh, what was the name of that planet? I Gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue and I can't think of it. But um, it makes you wonder about, you know, how everything, there's something missing. Uh, Tiamat, thank you, Michelle, um, in, in the ta- chat room. Um, Tiamat. I wonder if that has if that was one of those planets. Very well could be. Very mm. well. Yeah. Um okay, let's 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 move on. We've we've begun a series of what's called a lunar tetrad with the uh next one coming up on April 15th of this year. Can you explain to our listeners what a lunar tetrad is and how they will affect us? It has to do with the um where the uh, the points are on the when a moon when an eclipse happens, and what happens is the um, like ecl- eclipses occur at certain like intervals of certain time frames, and so when that mm-hmm. happens, I think that the eclipses are more effective or more they're more uh, potent, and that I think that they're um, the, then the eclipse and its energy is then for us to because they're like timed and they're perfectly timed that. It's almost like the universe is saying it's time for you to wake up and take what that eclipse is bringing you. And the eclipses, what they bring us are a chance to um, – it's a, it's a universe's way of going, you're ready. And so when it's timed like that, it's like, no, it's time for all of us to be ready. And whatever the universe brings us then, whether it's we perceive it as good, bad, evil um, – that it's an opportunity for us to be open and become more aware, and they, they always leave you with more than you're found. So the opportunity here will be that it is going to be in a like a set time, and I think it's it's like I think it's a six month time, Greg. But I was trying to flip through and find it, but I think it's six months that they're exactly yes. out. Um, okay, and then uh, then they um, you know are, are going to then you want to look at the signs, and they're going to be in Libra, Aries. Uh, Pisces, uh, Virgo, and so you want to you want to look at all right. What are those signs? And those are the 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 last two of each. Uh, uh, the, the you know the Virgo's the Virgo is the last part of the um, of the the self, the forming of the self, and Pisces is the last part of, part of completion completion of the cell of the completion of the 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 body as a whole or the entity the energy as a whole. And then Libra and Aries are the beginning. So with those four. Uh, I think that the opportunity is just that, completion and beginning. And it's almost like the universe says, all right, I've timed this for you. It's time to go. And uh, take what this eclipse has and open, and the awareness can be tremendous. So if the event's shocking, it's okay knowing that we're in this cycle. If the event's, uh, you know, this, like, seems to be mild, but know that it's just going to keep, um, the energies will keep building on, on the uh, the scenario. So look for around those times. And just a side note uh, about these tetrads, they'll be visible in just about for for just about everyone in the United States. Now we also have a the third of a series of four blood moons on April fourth, twenty fifteen, and the fourth blood moon will be on September twenty eighth of this year. What is a blood yes. moon, and what do the upcoming ones signify? The um, you know uh, the way the blood moons fell this year was. You know, they said they were important endings for um, cycles, and that we well, we wanted the, you know they were they were major like um, major events or major things could happen. And so as the cycle ends, 
um, there's always there's going to be a beginning behind that. Um, so what we want to do is make sure that um, in these blood moons that you know the opportunities for us to catapult ourselves are here. And um, you know astrology, I don't think, does a good enough job. I think there's more prophecies more into the moons, but um, I don't think astrology does enough for these. But they seem to coincide as well with the uh, eclipses. So you know, I think we talk right back into what we just got done talking about and bring this in. And I think that it's endings for beginnings, and it's time for us to now um, take these blood moons and know that this, this cycle is completing itself, and we must we we must at all costs move ourselves forward. Now, it's interesting that um, one of these is coming up during Passover of all days. I just found that kind of uh, interesting, and I wonder what the yeah. significance of that might be. Um, Sorry, my German I didn't shepherd is barking at something. No, he's fine. <laughs> um, in my other world, I deal with Passover quite a bit, and I never put that together, so that's extremely interesting because they took that time as a time to, you know, that that was a uh, time of, all right, we, we need to, like, um, cherish, remember, and, and fast, and so you want to be careful there as that happens. Um, and then, of course, you celebrate. So, I didn't put that one together with Passover, but you're right; it is right on that time. So that you know, that's bringing another form of religion into. It seems like everything's coinciding with, you know, or another uh, uh, philosophy comes in here, um, and it's coinciding with what we're all what we're talking about. I mean, we're talking about astrology. The blood moons are coming in, and now Passover's in, and the eclipses are here, and so it's pretty interesting how it's all you know running together here. Mm-hmm. Now um, I'm going to be taking another call here. Um, I see we have area code eight six two. You're on N five D radio with Jim Delacoli. Uh Can I get your name, please? Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. What's your name? Adasha. Hi, Adasha. Hi. Adasha. Hi. Hi. Welcome, welcome to N five D radio. Hi. One. Um. I don't know what time I was born. But uh, my birthday is January 5th, 1965. Wow, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Big five <-o. laughs> Yeah, and you got a new uh, full moon on your birthday today, um, right. close, close mm -hmm. enough. And uh, I always look at uh, birthdays when they fall on newer full moons. Uh, the year's going to be more dynamic because it's on a full year. It's time for you to get out and move and take action this year. Um, and do something about what it is you believe needs to be done. And uh, because it's full moon, I think you'll get the, uh, opportunities, yes, but I think you'll be able to see things from a perspective that will help you succeed even more. So um, you also have Pluto. Uh, Greg and I are big fans of Pluto and Capricorn. We've talked about mm -hmm. this forever. Uh, mm -hmm. And Pluto's hanging right over your sun right now as well. So it's at 13, 14 degrees. And, and um that, you know that's another opportunity for you to transform uh or transformation is here so you probably got a lot going on there's probably a lot of things in your life uh and take this on this birthday I'd really sit down and say all right where do I want to go this year try to keep track and and you know uh make sure you try to stay on course best you can but take these powerful planets that are helping you and uh mm -hmm. do something because this is this can be a dynamic year for you this year all right I definitely need it. I appreciate it so much. Sure. Sure. Um All right. I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to try to get my chart rectified. Yeah, I would I would definitely um sit down and if it, whether it's meditation or you could probably just do this uh mentally going through your life and say think of when times were you had really good times when times were tiring and exhausting, and then we can back that up and start looking at where Saturn was at any of those given moments. I think we can get pretty close to getting you your time of birth, but it does take a little bit of effort on uh, your part and then on the part of a, um, an astrologer to go, all right, what happened, You know what was going on, and I think they could get you pretty close to your birthday, their birthday time. Okay. So I, I would definitely document, just throughout your life, just look back. You know, 65, you're my age, so... Uh, 49. You've got, you've got a few years there under your belt. Yes, I do. I do. <laughs> and you're in our uh, Pluto and Virgo generation, too. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. <laughs> so I'm welcome to that part of... <laughs> welcome that. to the party. <laughs> so what exactly does that mean? If you could just give me a quick little summary. I don't want to take too much time off the show. I'll let you yeah. tell her, Greg. You're versed in it. <laughs> 
Uh, well, yeah, we're, we're the Pluto and Virgo generation, and that began around, what, 1958 or so, Jim? 50, 58, until, yeah, 58, 59. Until, what was it, 1970? 70, I think it was 1970, yeah. 72 maybe. Yep. Yeah. So uh, what that means is that, you know, we, we you're going to find that you're going to have challenges in your life that basically revolve around control, whether it's controlling on your part or other people controlling you. And you're going to have to find mm-hmm. ways to... Um, Deal with that, and uh, you're going to see situations that keep coming into your life. And here's a great example. Um, my mother is a type A control freak, and uh, I love her with all my heart, but that was one of the lessons she volunteered to give me. Now, I, when I got married, uh, my daughter's mom is also a type A, um, and uh, we ended up divorcing. And if that wasn't good enough, the uh, universe said, okay, well, you still haven't learned your lesson yet. We're going to give you another one. So wife number two was not only a type A personality, but... Uh, she was born on the same day as my mother. So this is how universe will give you these lessons, and it'll keep, it'll keep throwing them at you uh, time and time again. So like what Jim was saying, look at some of these patterns that have been going on in your life and find out what's happening and how you can take control of these situations. Okay. Well, you know, I, I know for many years I kept seeing the number 321. I mean, I had the room in, in college, it was either 321 or 322. Hmm. And that that number just resonated with me. And my mother passed away on March, either between March 21st and March 22nd. I'm not really sure because I wasn't there. Hmm. But they found her on the, the 22nd. So I always wondered, like, that, that number just, like, jumped out at me again. So... um the only other number that, like, the pattern, when I see it, just, like, it grabs my attention is 1111, like 1111. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I keep saying, I wonder if these were the, the times of birth, you know, or ultimately, I guess, when I ever transition, that the time that I would depart, because these numbers always will come back to me. Or do they mean that- something different? No, I, I think that that's – I think you're definitely onto to something. You want to look at those coincidences. But, again, I'd go mm-hmm. back to patterns and times at life when you were at your lowest low or the highest high or things were – you know, they were going decent. Just just document those time frames, and then what happens is you'll find that Saturn was in whatever house that's relevant um, at that time for you in your life. It was probably transiting there. And then we can back that up and go, well, if it was transiting here in 1974 – then, you know, it was probably here when you were born. And then we can start asking more questions and then get you closer. Okay. 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 Sweet. All right. But, it, yeah, don't don't lose any of those numbers or anything. I mean, those are those are relevant for your life, so make sure you keep those. And, and it'll it'll piece itself together. Just let it. Capricorns are, are tough to let go. So, you know, just, just let go. Let, 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 the, let the intuition work. Okay. Okay. So this okay. is a good Well, I hope that answers it for you. Yeah, good. thank you. No, You're very you welcome. Call. Thank you for calling in. All right, take Thank care you. now. Bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think uh, you know these numbers that do come in when people see them. It's it's we call them synchronistic numbers. Carl Jung, the psychologist, um, did a lot of research into synchronicities, and uh, you definitely want to pay attention to whatever numbers are coming into your life because they all do have meanings. And now, for and here's a great example too. If if you find like a penny on the ground, look at the date on it, or any any coin that just happens to come into your life, and look at the date because even the date on there has some kind of significance to why that that number did come into your life for that particular. Day. So, what, what's your, what are Absolutely. your thoughts on synchro- synchronicities and uh, numerology? My thoughts are: is everything happens for a reason. So you, mm-hmm. it's up to. I think that's part of uh, why we're here is to, to get to that understanding and, and really own that. And I think the more we allow that in, I think the just the the synchronicities in life, the the energies come that we need more and more and more, and our lessons become such that um, the understanding is complete almost as the lesson arrives. And so that you can quickly get through a lot if you just open to that. And, you know, that's our most powerful source. And, and you know, we, we've just got to get back to that. So what happens with you? Say you see 1111. Does that mean anything to you? 
I, I, I look at like I there's a I don't sleep well at night and um my my mind really races and I'm working on that but it seems like I'm always waking up at um eleven eleven two twenty two three thirty three and and I have <laughs> a three thirty three yeah and so I Did I'll, you, I'll that uh, movie? oh my gosh go ahead. Uh, so I, I I got a numerology book. I'm not very good at it, but I'm always looking at at you know what the, the new the numbers and what they mean. And and I, I love Louise Hay. I think she's pretty good at explaining illness and things. And so whenever I have something ailing, I'll do the same thing there. And I I think everything is like a call. It's a call to you to wake up, whether it's a good or bad thing. It's for you to wake up and and try to um, become more. And I do that at every moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, I think it was called the, the the fourth kind or something like that. But uh, Michelle and I were watching this movie where uh, this person apparently at 3:33 a.m. Um, was abducted um, by UFOs. Oh, no. and, 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 and yeah, yeah. And uh, apparently they were seeing these um, owls. All these people in this one little town in Alaska were seeing these owls, a white owl. And uh, th- that was the time that they actually had it recorded on a police camera that was monitoring the house. Uh, and they had the actual Holy footage cow. in that movie. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Now, and it's funny, too, because I know that, uh, gosh, it must have been maybe four or five years ago. One night I, 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 I went to bed early and I woke up at exactly 111, 222, and 333. I'm thinking, what are the wow. odds of this happening? Slim to none, absolutely. Holy cow! Or, or as I say, one hundred percent, obviously, because they happened. <laughs> well, that's so, true. <laughs> <laughs> but for anyone else, yeah, slim to odd, definitely. Um, yes. Now I also noticed that Mercury will be in retrograde during the summer solstice. What can we expect with that? Yeah, we we look, I always you, know, you take the the winter and summer solstice is that's where the sun's either in a, the summer solstice course is the highest point it's going to get here in the northern hemisphere and then it's going to start heading back south and then of course vice versa uh, for the winter solstice it'll be of course in the southern hemisphere and then um, the two equinoxes are when the sun's back over the equator so as, as you think of just just that alone. And come to the understanding of the appreciation of sun, the giver of life, the heater of the planet that gets the seeds to start their germination and to grow. Um, to have uh, Mercury there, I, I think re- really, Greg, this whole year is about us getting back in contact with who we truly are, with what truly exists, how we got here, how powerful we are. And I think that the retrograde uh, – Mercury's are going to happen in air signs, so we can come to an understand a better understanding. We're going to have some uh, slower moving planets and fire signs, which uh, um, you know is our ability to transform from one form to another or come to a un- deeper understanding and and perfect that which we you know have figured out and know that I think that that the the retrograde there and the other two retrogrades this year are going to be about us truly just communicating with ourselves again and then figuring this out and making the world a better place. So huge potential there as, as we uh, see that one in the summer. It's in the middle, so that's the one that we're going to know if we're doing it or not, I think, by then. Now, uh, on, on the uh, New Year's Eve show, uh, you were mentioning how uh, war might come into the picture later on this year. Can you uh, talk a yeah. little about that? Yeah, all three fire signs which uh, stir the passion within us to um, really, the fire signs come to make things better or grand, grander uh, on the scale. Um, and so we're going to have three slow-moving planets um, throughout the year, not all year, but throughout the year, uh, visit the three fire signs. We have Uranus and Aries, and it's been there since March of 2011. Uh, it's perfectly squaring right now Pluto, which is in Capricorn, um, and then, uh, of course, Jupiter is in Leo. It's been there since uh, the summer of 2014. And now Saturn is in uh, Sagittarius. So um, we have three planets in fire signs. Um, and then we're going to have these uh, squares. This is the final squaring of Pluto, Uranus. And uh, so I think that that is setting the stage for a huge potential between now and March, you know, late March, April. Um, for war to really take off, and I, you know, you know as well as I know, Greg, because you follow things. 
uh, mm -hmm. we've got a lot of different areas in the world that are on the edge of, and probably fighting as we know it, but we're not being told the truth. I, you know, you never do know anymore um, what's going on. You always find out after the fact. But the huge conflict and huge opportunity for alchemy to happen. So I, I, I see war um, coming. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, there's a lot of people that are seeing and feeling it. And for the most part, just about every major event that happens is generally a false flag. It was something that was constructed to you know, keep us living in fear and so on and so forth. And if there weren't these idiots at the top, uh, you know, of our perceived top of the pyramid, you know, this world would be a mm -hmm. hell of a lot better place because uh, you know, there, there wouldn't be these incidents that keep us living in fear. Now, the U.S. dollar, as you know, has been propped up by hot air and bullshit for several years since the Fed never got their charter renewed in 2012. Now, there's talk of a QE4. Uh, QE, it means quantitative easing, uh, where the Fed continues to print fiat currency and, in essence, creates hyperinflation, which we're seeing in the grocery stores right now. When do you see the death of the U.S. dollar and why? I think, you know, and I... Um I follow a lot of guys that that are in the uh, way smarter than me in the financial sector because I've been looking. I think the dollar actually died in '08, and then they started this quantitative easing program, as you were mm -hmm. talking about, um, which is nothing any of us would ever imagine could have happened. How do you dump 85 billion dollars a month into markets that aren't working? They weren't working before you decided to do it. Um, nobody would mm -hmm. ever see that coming. So I, I, I've looked at the dollars already being. Uh, you know, it's it's already died. They've just they've given they put life support to it, and and now we're looking at you know dropping oil, trying to mess up other other markets. I you know I think we're, we're I think we're seeing the end, and I think that I, I want to be careful here because astrologically it told me in oh eight oh nine that this was happening. That's when Pluto went into Capricorn, and that's when I felt like all right, here's the end of the dollar. But because Pluto moves so slow, it's a process. So I'm looking mm -hmm. at later this year, probably by July August. That will, you know, the masses will know that the dollar um, just can't go on. And and you know, I don't want to put fear out there, Greg, but the reality no. is, uh, the dollar needs not to happen. The damn thing. Yes, yes. It, it has um, it's, to happen. It's, it's, yes, it's backed by nothing. I mean, I don't know about you, but if you and I could just print money and then go tell people they have to use it, and I'm a charge you interest and. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you just print it out of thin air, and then you make interest on it. And you're just, and, and you can keep it if you want, or you know, give it away if you want, or charge interest, or it, it, the whole thing's so bizarre. But the only thing that truly holds the value on the dollar is our ability to have the military might, and then us working. Uh, I think we're the ones that put a value to the dollar because we're out there continually working. So our labor force, or our labor itself, is what gives the dollar the value it has today. And I'm glad you did mention Pluto and Capricorn again. And for those people who perhaps are tuning in for the first time, uh, let's let's just go over that real quick. Pluto and Capricorn. Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, and like Jim said, that's when we saw the collapse of the dollar. Uh, we saw all these banks uh, basically get shut down, except for the too big to jail slash fail banks. <laughs> and the last the last time that Pluto was in Capricorn was during both the French and American revolutions in the 1700s. And when you look around what's going on since 2008 forward, we're seeing revolutions all throughout the world. And Pluto is known as the destroyer, and it basically will tear down everything that is not in humanity's best interests and will give us mm -hmm. an opportunity to rebuild them. So like what Jim was saying, this is by far nothing related to fear this is an opportunity just like everything that we've been talking about all these dates are presenting opportunities this is just one really big opportunity because pluto stays in, in in capricorn until the year 2023 so we were talking on the new year's eve show about how it apexes basically uh this year in the middle of this year we're reaching that uh midway point can you talk a little yep, about yep. that mm-hmm yeah, and I, uh, you know, we divide each sign into three segments: zero to ten, nine. Uh, I'm sorry, eleven to twenty, and then twenty-one to thirty. Um, whenever a planet transits the sign, then we give it um, first. Like Pluto gets the, it's going to be operating like a Capricorn, Capricorn, so to speak, um, as it goes through those first ten degrees. Once it hits that that eleventh degree, now it's uh, operating as a Taurus, Capricorn, and Taurus is where we must build. Um, the new foundation for all right, where are we going? So 
we, we you know, uh, the Capricorn Capper, the Pluto, uh, the first 10 degrees showed us what doesn't work and why it don't work and that it had to be destroyed. So it destroys it. We get to that 11 to 20 degree. Now we're in the next Earth sign, which is Taurus Capricorn, and we must rebuild. And so that's what I'm looking at happening here is, and I think that's why the Bitcoin, I don't know if you followed that, Greg, I think that's why that showed yeah. up. And, um, you know, and I think that's why they dropped commodities now because I, they're really trying to figure out what the – and I think they have an idea what they want to do. But I think if they're seeing they're getting so much resistance, and th- that's us. That's that's the tourist part, and that's us going, this is bull crap. we we got to fix this, and we got to fix it in a way that's going to work for – not just our generation, but our kids and our grandkids, and that's what we're doing now. So I think this is going to be a big year for all the monetary um, uh, systems in, throughout the, the planet. The ones that back themselves by something that have uh, value, I think, are going to make it. The ones that don't aren't, and we're definitely in that. We're not going to make it category because we're backed by absolutely nothing but lies. Right, right, and uh, well, the uh, world one of the World Bank whistleblowers, uh, Karen Tudes, was talking about how there's already a currency in place um, to replace the dollar. So this should be a relatively quick and easy transition if the dollar does officially die. I, 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 that remains to be played out. But um, I've also been following the works of Michael Tellinger with his Ubuntu community, where he can live without. He, he explains how you can live without without money and uh you know of course there's the the venus project as well um where yeah. it shows how we can all live in abundance and prosperity without money so this is something that that is definitely getting revealed while pluto is in capricorn um you know in in re- regard to the you know you saying that the dollar died in 08 you know and that's we are going to be the last people to know that you know yes. they're going to yes. act as if everything is fine nothing's wrong you know, you know nothing to see here um, but yeah. we're going to be the last to know about it. And that's great civilizations crumble because they crumble within because nobody thought it could happen, and it was happening all around them. And that's what we're seeing at this point. It's it's everywhere. If if you can't face it and truly look at it, you got to start looking in the mirror because you're, you're, you're part of the problem at this point. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I, I follow uh, Greg Hunter from USA Watchdog. Um, on YouTube, and his last guest was talking about the uh, the oil prices dropping significantly. I don't know what uh, gas is there. How much is gas a gallon up there? Uh, I just saw two twenty four heading to the office today. Okay, well here in Florida it's uh, two dollars and twelve cents. And uh, his guest, I forgot his name, but I, I did post it on one of the more recent uh, Inside the Alternative News posts. But his guest was saying that. Um, even even the dropping oil prices are contrived. Um, and as a matter of fact, I was talking to Michelle uh, last year saying, you know, in, in like September, I said, I guarantee, you know, you're going to see the oil prices drop because right before the elections. You know, this, it happens yes, every absolutely. year. Absolutely. Every year you, well, you can plan on it. And here's the question I have, Greg, which nobody's answered. Where's Greenpeace at? Where's the, the planet warming group at you know the al gores that we were we're using too much oil and uh, we're depleting the earth and we're packed pe- past peak oil why is oil so cheap then i mean and why are they not jumping up and down screaming that oil's so cheap now that people are going to go back to abusing it i mean that it's just mm-hmm. it's hilarious to me as you watch this and, th- and then you look at all the packaging that's been created over the last 20 years and plastic is oil basically i mean it, that's the biggest mm-hmm. ingredient in making plastic and they're making more packaging and more packaging and more packaging every time you turn around so you know to me the whole thing's hilarious if you truly just look at it that i'm not saying that there is or isn't an oil shortage i guess what mm-hmm. my point is is that they, they've been lying to us to manipulate us and, and they've done a damn good job of it and now they're dropping oil like nobody's business and nobody's raising a flag going wait a minute i thought we were ruining the planet where's all you know how come we're not being more f- planet friendly here at this point so it's it's, well, it's hilarious actually when you look at it it's funny too because you know they've, they've proven in recent years that oil is abiotic which means it replenishes yes. itself and you yes. know and they're trying to and, and, and it really it, you have to laugh at you know these, these even even in you know college institutions where they're still clinging to that same old it's fossil fuel, fossil you know, fuel from dinosaurs. Really, really. How many dinosaurs yeah. really had to die for this much oil to be produced? Really, people, think exactly. about it. <laughs> but yet, you know, here in the United States, you can buy like a, I don't know, a, a Ford 
escort or whatever here. And uh, there's limits on the EPA because, uh, you know, we're not allowed to get such great gas mileage like they do in Europe. Now, you could have yes. the same car yes. here in the United States that gets maybe 30, 35 miles a gallon. Same car in Europe's getting 70 to 80 miles a gallon. It yes. just goes to show you how we've been manipulated and fooled for such a long time. And, and you know, this, these two Aquarius moons and Pluto and Capricorn, people just start to ask the question now. It's like, what? You know, what, what are you talking about? And, and that's what we need to do. And, and keep revealing stuff, Greg, like you do. You do such a wonderful job with that. Oh, thank you. You know, and, and mm-hmm. one of the things I, I've, I've brought up on several articles on InsideD.com, a lot of people are unaware of it, too, that um, Nikola Tesla powered the Chicago's World Fair in the 1800s on free electricity, but his financier was J.P. Morgan. So Morgan yes. asks Tesla, you know, how do we charge people this, for, uh, for, for this? And because it was just drawing off of the air that we breathe, he says, you can't, mm-hmm. you don't, we don't. And from that point forward, uh, Morgan ended up suppressing that idea. And then flash forward to the 1980s when Stanley Meyer built a car that could go from coast to coast on 22 or 23 gallons of water, and it didn't matter what yeah. kind of water it was. It could be compressed snow, yeah, lake could water, it could be yep. urine, yeah, anything. Um, and, of course, he ended up getting poisoned to death. So, you know, this whole BS about oil and, you know, the petrodollar, you know, let's, let's move beyond it. We don't need these idiots at the top telling us who, what, where, and how. We can do this on our own. Right. And this is, these are these opportunities that you're speaking about through astrology that are popping up, especially with uh, Pluto and Capricorn. Yeah, and and we're at the point now where Pluto hitting that middle point of we're di- we're just tired of the games and and we're di- we're not even going to discuss it because it's so absurd. Like like we're, you and I are talking that we're just going to the fixing stage. We're, we're tired of discussing. We're just going to change it. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more and more people are really moving away from the mainstream media, uh, the news, newspapers. <laughs> I think newspapers mm-hmm. are at an all low, all time low for sales right now, which is great. Uh, viewership on the the mainstream news is at an all time low. Uh, people yes. just don't trust the mainstream media, and for good reasons. Yeah, I think they've done it to the. It's self inflicted. There's no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. Now, ha- have you seen the movie The Matrix? I have not. Uh, people refer that to me all the time, and I I, I oh need to God. watch. I need to just sit down and watch it. So. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really is a fascinating movie, and if you do get the opportunity, I highly recommend it because there's so much truth hidden within that movie that it, it's just it's really mind blowing. Um, and uh, right. but it, it's it's obvious that we are in a matrix of of sorts. Um, mm-hmm. Do you see? Is there any thing in the near future where you see this matrix collapsing completely? We yeah I, I think by 2017 we talked about that I don't want to get out of 2015 too much um, uh-huh. but you know that Pluto and Capricorn's been uh, really working on the underpinnings of all the manipulation and just what's good and not good the uh, this year with those three slower moving planets going in fire signs I think that we're going to start really um, making a change that's going to be good for. Um, like long periods of time. And then as you and I were talking late of 2017, Saturn, the ruler of Capricorn, will get out of Sagittarius and then will get into Capricorn. And so I think that while Saturn Saturn just got into Sagittarius, I think while it's transiting Sagittarius um, from now till the end of 2017, that uh, the sign of Sagittarius is where we like put our understanding out there for everybody to see, and then it can get tweaked, you know, uh, here and there. But we're basically now wise to how things work, why they have to work certain ways, and that there is a, a process, and that it's above us all. Um, but we all have the ability to tap into it. And so I think with Saturn doing that this next two years, that's our job. I mean, that's going to be our quest is to uh, find deep within us who we really are, what what our creative abilities are, what we can create, what we don't need to create, and do something with that. Because if we don't, I think uh, we pay for a minimum of 29 years, and and I don't want that. So uh, you know, I'm really putting mm-hmm. out there is find that philosophy that you know is deep within you. Find who you really are. Find what matters to that that energy, and do something about it. And and if you do, 
um, the the what what can happen with with Saturn then transiting Sagittarius and then going into Capricorn and meeting Pluto there. What can happen, to, in my opinion, is we can make this this planet the, what it what it really should be, and and that can happen in a short period of time if enough people uh, grasp what's coming and, and the ability to bring alchemy to whatever it is we need and transform it into whatever we need to transform it into is here. And it's it's over these next, you know, three, four, five, six, seven years. So the party's in Capricorn with Pluto and Saturn then, huh? It will be in 2017. And, and <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm looking at Uranus and Aries. And uh, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, and it's like we must create, we must begin anew. We, mu- you know, and, and uh, Uranus itself is that uh, I'll bring to you the miracle as you need it. So we just got to get going. You know, we get the planets are with us here. We got to believe in ourselves and get moving. Mm-hmm. Um, now I know that there's a, uh, several conjunctions that are coming up for 2015. There's going to be two Venus Mars ones, two Venus Jupiters, and then a Mars Jupiter one. Uh, how important are these conjunctions? Uh, you know, th- those are Venus and Jupiter, I mean, and Venus and Mars. Uh, oh, sorry, Venus and Mars are more personal. It's the male and female side. Uh, Jupiter mm-hmm. is kind of that messenger planet, and it's the bringer of expansion and luck. So anytime Jupiter and Venus are are uh, connected, uh, I love the possibility. So, so you want to make sure that um, when those happen and when they friendly connect through trines, that you're really pushing forward and doing things um, in a positive way. Uh, Jupiter and Venus will be together this summer um, for, it's not going to be a long time, but it'll be the end, beginning of July, late June, July, they'll be together. Um, and I think we'll like what happens there as uh, Leo, the sign they're going to connect in or is um, the sign of creation itself. It's where we, our pride, uh, become something. Um, whenever Jupiter, when Jupiter and Mars get together, we want to watch that the passion gets, the passion will get stirred. Good time for there could be wars here, Greg, but there's also time for us to aggressively get after what it is we know needs to be done. And and really, again, that's going to be in Leo as well. That that's going to give us an opportunity to really um, catapult ourselves because we're going to have that Mars energy. With um, I'm sorry, it's going to be in it's going to be in Virgo early. Um, but the Mars energy will be together with that just for us to really get moving in the direction that we see fit here. Um, that's actually going to fall. I looked at that, Greg. That's going to fall by where New and I's Pluto is in Virgo. So that, that's going to be a huge opportunity for us to – I mean, we're going to be very aggressive in our message uh, in late summer this year. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, yeah, I like that, that opportunity. July 1st. Yeah, July 1st is the the, uh, the first of two uh, Venus-Jupiter conjunctions. And then October mm-hmm. 17th, we have a Mars-Jupiter uh, conjunction. Yeah. Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, Mars-Jupiter in the sign of Virgo. That's going to be on. That's Because I looked at that. I always try to look at my, you, you know, what planets are going to hit around my, any of my natal planets. And for me, I was uh, around 17 degrees of Virgo. My uh, I have a Uranus-Pluto conjunction exactly. Um, and that's going to be uh, late October, November, that that's, they're going to come together. Um, and th- the opportunity there then for our generation, Greg, is we're really going to aggressively, I think we're going to call bullshit um, mm-hmm. because it's going to be on our natal Plutos, and we're, we're just not going to put up with it. And Mars gives you that. Mars gives you that gumption to just say, this ain't happening. You know, we're not doing this, and that's not how it's going to be. And so with Jupiter, that's going to even expand that even more. So think of Virgo and us trying to make sure that, where we're going, we're trying to purify that um, and, and, you know, make sure that we dot our I's and cross our T's. So I'm looking forward, actually, to that time because uh, the sun will be there as well So uh, for a short period of time. So it's going to be interesting for us. It's really fascinating when you look at, 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 at astrology because you have all these cycles within cycles. It's kind of like the... Mm-hmm. The Mayan wheel, where one wheel clicks and it clicks, it forces another wheel yes. to click, which makes a different wheel to click. Um, but that's what we're looking at now, and everything we're talking about falls under Pluto in Capricorn, and then that falls yes. under a, a larger cycle, you know. And then you get all the way out to the precession of the equinoxes, and I'm sure there's much greater cycles than that um, yes. as well. So um, it, it, it's really fascinating to see how all of these things are, all these little wheels are turning within much larger wheels, and uh, I find that really, really fascinating. Um, yeah, now, that's I why know you that can't say... Go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, that's, that, that's why you can't 
say like, oh, every January I'm this, or every, because you may have another cycle that's coming that's rearing its energies, and it may make you do just the opposite or something totally different um, than than what you do under that sun cycle. So you got to really be careful and follow all the planets. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I know that there were a few things that you want, before we move on to uh, beyond 2015, there were some things that you wanted to talk about too? Yeah, yeah. I um, Okay. Trying to put a, trying to put a list together, so um, we you know we talked a little bit about this on uh, uh, December thirty first, and I th- was hoping to kind of go over a couple. So I could, thank you for giving me the time. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. The uh, outer space was one. Um, I'm really looking for uh, because Sagittarius is a sign that rules like our ability to. Um, you know, we saw the physical, we understood the physical, but we also felt, and so we had to merge the physical with the non-physical, and Sagittarius is where that happens. It's where we build a philosophy, and so I'm looking at, as uh, Saturn goes through the sign of Sagittarius, I'm looking at tremendous opportunities for outer space, understanding of outer space, or outer sta- understanding of the unknown, um, to where we can kind of piece together a little bit more of who we really are and what we really are, and that... You know, this wasn't the. This isn't the only life, and uh, this won't be the end. We're, we're, we continue on, and we're from such a unbelievable place. And there's so much that we know and together have worked on. That I hope you know that should be Saturn being in Sagittarius this year, and and the, until you know the end of 2017, I think we're going to see a lot of those things um, uh, happen. So uh, I'm hoping everybody understands the depth of the possibilities here. So it's funny too because the Maya believe that we uh, and that we've gone through all the elements, and the last element to go through is ether, which I I feel is aether, not e- necessarily ether, but a e t h e r, which would be mm-hmm. the cosmos, which is what you're talking about. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think the possibilities that are going to be there, and and uh, I'm gonna tell you, uh, Saturn says you must. Um, do your part, and so I'm, I'm telling people that you, you've got to figure out to a, a, a deeper degree, get in that soul, and figure out just who you are. The chance and opportunities here, do do it, do it, and figure out that you are more powerful than probably you're giving yourself credit. Mm-hmm. So okay, and um, I know you had like a list of stuff: self awareness, self empowerment, uh, true power, yeah. creation, love, yeah. truth, sudden changes. So whatever you want to jump into, brother, floor is yours. Okay. Yeah, um, we got. Thank you. I appreciate that. I um, I think in the end, what we're all going to figure out here is that um, the power that we have to create is something that I don't care what you surround yourself with can't match. And you know, and, and I think that it stems from our ability to love things and understand them from a perspective that's. Uh, uh, universal it's timeless you know and and, um all this is possible now because these three slow moving planets are going to be in fire signs and it's going to help us transform what we've been taught since we've been here and i think what uh maybe what we taught in the contractual agreement as we were coming here um all that's going to like come to uh the and come to and a point where we're going to like expose to ourselves for the first time or again i should say that um, we truly are our own masters, and it's time for us to open to that. Uh, take these fire signs and take these slow-moving planets in these fire signs and bring that alchemy to your soul and burn away that which is no longer good and, and open to um, your true power and your ability to create because it's never not been there. It's just a matter of you coming to the understanding that you have what you need and it's enough. So. Um, I think that potential's there with the new moons, two new moons in, in Aquarius. I think that the opportunity for sudden change, sudden awareness, or sudden like understanding is just right in our face here. And so, if we can take these two new moons and tell the universe we're ready to become what we've always been, I think that 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 opportunity. I don't want to become anybody's. Uh, karma but i think that if you can put out in some way shape or form that message the universe is going to be more than willing to throw it back to you um Mm -hmm. with all these zero degrees moons um that we've experienced that's from from scorpio all the way to coming up in in aquarius that you cannot tell me that this isn't our time to 
take what we know and become something new. So, you know, I, I think those things, all with the planets trying to help us, are right in our face, Greg, and, and we need to go get them. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, you know, uh, uh, Michelle, uh, Larry, and I did a impromptu uh, show on the Cosmic car- uh, Wild Card, which is an article uh, I wrote uh, and, and posted on N5D, and I talk about all these things that could possibly happen. And, and mm-hmm. now and some of the, uh, many of them are actually cosmic things. Um, one of them is the, uh, you know, the influx of cosmic rays. There's a, a galactic ribbon. There's... Um, well, and, and then the, you can come back to Earth and see the Schumann resonance rising and all. But I think that ultimately what everything is pointing us toward is something that's going to happen within our DNA because we only have 20 of our 60-some-odd codons turned on. And I think that once these codons flip up that turn on, it's just going to it's just gonna blow people's minds. If you If you could manifest... Anything you wanted from the thin air, why would you need money? If you could teletransport, why would you need cars? You know, th- these are some of the possibilities yeah. that exist. And I, my feeling is that something is going to happen. I, mean, I could be way off, but this is my gut feeling, is that something's going to happen, and, and it's, it's already happening right now. We're start, starting to see children born with three strands of DNA, um, and there's something that's happening already where the, the veil is lifting and uh, – the whole Pluto and Capricorn thing right now is um, is really going to be tearing down all these old structures that people, you know, it's going to freak people out initially when they see money, government, and religion collapse. But, yeah. you know, all three of those have been kept us tied to subservience, control, and conformity, and they've kept us as economic slave for millennia. So there's something huge that's going to be happening. I call it the cosmic wild card, and it could be something that um, is – we don't even know about something that's completely unexpected where it is in the proverbial blink of an eye that something amazing happens that turns everything around. And we just say, you know, why, why did we even believe that lie of money? You know? Yes. Yes. Or what fame, you know, what suppose fame or things could do. What, you know, why do we fall for all that? And I think that's what's going to happen. I think it's starting to happen. I'm listening to people and they're like, what am I doing here? You know? Uh, why and why am I doing all this? This makes no sense. I'm not happy, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you know, people. Uh, you know, we, we we work. You know, 40 hours a week. Most people, not me. I work a lot more than that. But you know, most <laughs> people work. For, you know, Monday through Friday. You know, and then they they live for the weekend, and you know, and then finally the weekend rolls around. The weather's horrible, and what do you have to look forward to? And you look at even at the etymology of weekend. Weekend, weakened. Yes, it's the same word. Yes, weekend. weekend, you're weakened Absolutely. by the weekend. Yeah, Absolutely. So, and and even the days are are fun uh, fun to look at too, because obviously several of the days are are named after uh, celestial objects like the sun, Sunday, moon would be Monday, yep. Moon Day. Yep. Um, yep. So uh, you know, it, it, I, I highly encourage people to look at like the origin of words and even days. You know, there's reasons why they named everything the way they are. They're not just random uh, words like Tuesday uh, or Wednesday. Woden's Day is the breakdown of that, and they each each day represents planets um, or or celestial beings. Um, so when when these uh, people that are in power are 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 planning out their uh you know next war they're looking at the specific day like 911 uh and specific yeah. times for things to happen it, it's not coincidence that these false flags happen at specific times absolutely it, it, everything's planned and i've always believed that uh, i mean and and you know i think astrology if you really start studying it and looking at it i think that can help you understand that th- these cycles are going on and evil exists for periods of time why i don't i don't know why we i guess we had to learn the lesson but uh we can make evil go away and and that's where we're at now i think it's time to to remove that from where we are yeah definitely and and a lot of that is just don't give your energy to it you know if you yes. Yes. You know, these some people like watching horror flicks. What does that elicit? Fear. You know, you're putting that that negative energy out into the uh, aether, and uh, it's it's not helping. So you know, and no. that's all they they seem to push. You'll see these uh, commercials on TV. Every movie that they're putting out seems to be fear related. You know, yes. so you know, just stop buying into the fear. 
propaganda, and uh, that's half the battle. Michelle says, yes. watch football in st- in- instead. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was uh, sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the other thing we haven't talked about, and I don't talk much about it, but Neptune is in its own sign, Pisces, and that rules movies, and it rules... Uh, your ability to be taken away somewhere else. But it also, on the other end of that spectrum, you know, that's what's kind of not real, or so to speak, or you got to sort it out. But on the other end of that spectrum is the truest of truths and the greatest love of all. So, you know, we have the opportunity to figure this all out and put it all together. And with Neptune being in Pisces, which I don't talk enough about, I think, uh, huge opportunities for us to do just that. And I find it interesting that, uh, as, as you talked, uh, they're not watching. The news isn't being watched as much, and um, you know, movies aren't doing as well as they could, and the music's not as as good as it used to be, and all these things are. It's, it's interesting because Neptune's in Pisces, and that you would think those things would flourish, but people are tired of being manipulated, and so that's being exposed. And people, are, we're on the right side of that, where we're, we're ending the manipulation. So now we're finding the truest. What do we love? And that's emerging. And you know, what is the truth? And that's emerging. So that's helping as well. Neptune being in, in uh, uh, its own sign of Pisces. so and, and we got that moon we talked about, the last degree, which I think we're just going to – that's going to keep just ramping up as we get to the uh, middle of March. It's kind of funny to see how personalities and people's uh, thought processes are changing because, you know, maybe 10 years ago if you said – you know, somebody if, if somebody asked you, uh, well, who would you vote for this year? And you said, I didn't vote. They would look at you like you're unpatriotic and, you know, you're, yes. you're not doing the right thing. But nowadays it's yes. like, I didn't vote. And, you know, well, who did you vote for? Well, I didn't vote either. <laughs> right. You know, and then it's like, why would you vote for two people that you didn't want in there and aren't looking out for you at all? So what are you doing voting at all? You know, I mean, exactly. at least you're not a part of that, I guess. You know, and, that, and that's the healthy thing I think is coming of all this. I remember back in uh, 2008, I went to the uh, voting polls. I did vote that year for for uh, Ron Paul, and uh, mm-hmm. he, I, in, in my opinion, he was our last hope. But um, yes, well, after I voted, um, I would ask people, "Who are you voting for, McCain or uh, Obama?" And they'd tell me who, and I'd say, "Can you name three things that either that 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 this person did?" And nobody, not one. I must have asked a hundred people. Not one person yeah, could name they, three they didn't have things that they did. No idea right. whatsoever, you know, and they're just following the flock. Um, I got into an argument with a guy, uh, my, my best friend. I go, who are you b- voting for? He said, Obama. I said, why? Can you name three things? He's like, no. He goes, and then why, are you, why, why are you voting for him? Well, you know, he's the lesser of two evils. And people don't understand that you're still getting evil. It doesn't matter who you vote the for. Evil's still, evil still evil. there. That's right. <laughs> mm-hmm. But he had a hard time understanding that, and I think he's starting to uh, turn the corner finally. You know, I've, I've, I, you know, I think I finally have reached uh, uh, my friend about those kind of situations. Now let's let's go nice. let's go forward a little. Um, and we we touched on this um, on the New Year's Eve show, but a lot of people are talking about 2017 being a really big year. You know, but yet they're having a hard time putting their finger on exactly what to expect. What do you see in 2017? I always look at, and I'm going to talk Saturn here first. Uh, Saturn's going mm-hmm. to be, um, it's going to be retrograde for the final time in the sign of Sagittarius in August, and it comes direct on the 25th of August, and then it goes forward and gets into uh, the sign of Capricorn, and it's going to get there in, in uh, December. And, and Saturn rules Capricorn, and Capricorn is um, the physical plane on Earth. It's time. It's it's um, our ability to understand the restrictions of the physical flo- uh, life in the physical form. And so it does rule like any structure, any government, military, the monetary systems. You know, just how that physical structure wor- structure worked uh, is ruled by Saturn and Capricorn. So whenever Saturn comes back to Capricorn, that's then going to be lit up. Um, and it, it's got to be worked on because Saturn says you must do the work. Well, we're going to have our friend Pluto still there. And so to me, mm-hmm. uh, there is not much opportunity for the powers to be when we get to that point. Um, anyway, 
what I'd like to do is make sure it's game, set, match by the time we get there, if that makes sense. So I don't want to do any messing around while Saturn's transiting Sagittarius. I want to say, all right, what can happen and where can we go and what can we make this look like? So when Saturn gets into Capricorn, we're just doing all the work. I mean, that's, we're just, we put our, got our heads down and we're all going, this is what it's going to be like. We've already, you know, figured it out. We got everything in place and now let's work the plan. And that's what I see 2017 being. So I see a lot of crumbling between now and then and in the year 2017. But, you know, when Saturn gets in there with, with Pluto, I think we're going to have tremendous um, opportunities. And, and this change will happen. And it's almost going to be like we're going to – I can just almost feel it. We'll fall to our knees just in, in grace of whatever uh, that runs this whole thing. And it's just like – I knew we could do this, and it's just going to be like we could just let it out, you know. And So I'm looking forward to 2017 as that time of us really opening um, to that change that we brought, and we knew it was here. We knew from the moment that we made the contract to come to this planet we were going to be heavily involved. And then, you know, we, we let the, the younger group take over because you and I ain't getting any younger, Greg. And I see after that <laughs> we're going to start reaping the benefits of that, you know. So um, I, I see a lot of 2017 with that. Um, uh, going on, and, and what I think is going to help us is Jupiter will be in Libra, and Libra is that'll help you and I, but I think it's going to help the planet because it's our ability to to seek and find balance. And having Jupiter there, I think, is just going to be a tremendous, tremendous um, force that'll be helping us to to make sure that what we do is balanced and it's fair for all. It's funny you said that uh, you and I aren't getting any younger. Um, I've had this sciatica nerve issue for at least 15 years. And in the last week, I've, I've actually gone through a spontaneous healing where I can now walk really? before I could, yeah, I could only walk maybe a hundred yards, 200 yards, and I'd have to stretch my back out, squat down. And now I can walk miles literally. And wow. I have with my Good dog. Yeah. I've gone through this Good spontaneous healing. So who knows if this is something like I was talking about that's involved with the uh, cosmic wild card, um, and also like like you said too, um, those in power are going to be using astrology against us. So uh, mm-hmm. you know, in, so let's say in 2017, what cards do they have left? Well, I think that that's the the madness gets revealed is like there's no way their egos will be tied to it, and I think that the the mistakes that are made will be so critical and so obvious and so. Like just in our faces that uh, it's just it was just going to be torn down quickly and and so and and they're you know they'll be ego based and so it'll just they'll just come down with it and and they're going to struggle big time not without a fight don't get me wrong but um, I think once the masses figure this out it's it, it's going to be the process will be pretty swift and it'll I think we'll be accurate in our punishment so um, because Pluto doesn't um, Pluto doesn't like forgive that easily if that makes sense the worse the crime the the harder the punishment with pluto that's always been the case Mm -hmm. now i I think there's two games that are going on here this is a controlled collapse number one um everything you know obviously in order to usher in the new world order the one world order however you want to say it um Mm -hmm. but uh conversely the energies are ripe for us not to allow that to happen and for us to rebuild this planet in humanity's best interest. Yes. Yes. I think that's our quest. And I think you've kind of known that since you were, since you could remember things. And I think I have too. That's why we've led different lives. And I think our generations has, has done that because we're almost, we're not, I'm not going to say we're the whistleblowers, but we're the ones that are going, wait a minute here. Why is, why are we doing this? And we just almost turned about face and changed, uh, you know, just, different segments of our lives because we knew it wasn't something that was sustainable. We knew that. We knew we had to work on that and fix it. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I want to jump ahead just a little bit further (laughs) to uh, 2023. (laughs) When Pluto Pluto goes into Aquarius? Yes, when it finally leaves Capricorn. Uh, What, 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 well, what do you see uh, going from, forward from 2017 until 2023? Let's let's ask that. Yeah, we got a, we got a big mess, and, and I'm going to talk. It's mostly going to be the Pluto transit, but we're going to have uh, Saturn helping us because Saturn's coming into to Capricorn, then it's going to go into Aquarius, and then it, of course go into Pisces. But um, it, it's about us, like 
and, and this is where I want to be careful because uh, I remind my kids all the time that please go through the pain. And I know I heard some of your guests the other night talk about we're not supposed to have pain and things, and I agree with that 100%, but we have it. It's in our face, and, and I think we want to make sure we go through the pain um, and go through that process so we remember it, we could smell it, we could see it, taste it. Um, so when it comes back, we shut it out immediately the next time, if, if it ever tries to come back. And so we go through that process, and that's through, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then, then like, we, all right, we got this. And then we, you know, from, you know, 2019, 2020, 21, 2, 23, uh, the process then is now where do we take what we have? The slate's clean. What are we going to do here? Um, and, and so when Pluto moves into Aquarius, it's about, all right, what is free? Wh- where is it? What does it look like? What does it smell like? What is free forever? What's free for you know long periods of time? And that's the stuff we're going to really then start piecing together and enjoy the process because Pluto's so slow. But when you look at it, you learn the lesson so well that you never have to repeat it. And that's our <laughs> opportunity here. We don't have to repeat the lesson. That's that's beautiful because uh, I don't want to. <laughs> no, yeah, I, and I think. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm good. Uh, I think the pain that we've had uh, and we dealt with it's been most of our lives because we just knew something wasn't right. That to now to, to come in our awareness and us to find it and have avenues to go find it. We've waited for this for not just this life. It's been many lives, and it's time to fix it. And astrology saying here's the fixing time. I'm I'm helping you. The planets are behind you. Go get it. You know, it's not going to be easy and simple the whole way through, but nor do we want it because if it is, we might skip three or four steps that are going to cause us to get back where we are. We don't want to get back here. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm, I'm seeing that there's going to be a lot of uh, the, the older generations, you know, people that are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, they're going to have a really hard time with everything that's coming up, especially if and when, in my opinion, uh, money, religion, and uh, governments collapse. You know, what yeah. can we do to help them? Yeah, and, and you know th- that's our part of the cycle of. Uh, th- there's things that the groups beneath us are gonna go. Man, they they didn't they didn't quite kind of understand it. They'll be talking about us, but what we did understand was what was what was brought to us, and we revealed it. I do think our the older generations, um, the sixty people in their sixties, seventies, and eighties. I think that they're because uh, I'm listening to them. Um, I think they're realizing mm-hmm. it, and but I also think they're wise enough to know it's like, man, I don't have. I just don't have the energy that I had. I don't, you know, and that's where, you know, these cycles of you're in that third Saturn cycle and it was probably presented to you, but you didn't feel like you could do something. And But now you're in this last one, you're like, all right, I'm going to be wise enough here to know that I'm going to face it, but I may not be able to fix it for everybody. I'm going to fix it to where, from what I understand, uh, it's fixed. And so I think that's what they're going to do. And what we can do to help them is let them know that they got us to where the point to where we could get to making that change. Does that make sense? And that we appreciate yeah, yeah. that. And and then it's our yeah. turn. They handed the baton and we took it. And now we're, we're doing what we all in the human race do, which is make it better for the next group. Yeah, everything was planned out on a larger scale on the other side of the veil. And uh, they knew that they would be sacrificing themselves to come in at that yes. particular point in time you know, to yes. endure all the bullshit, even though that it may seem like they are unawakened, but they knew that the ultimate goal would be to help spawn us to uh, reach the end goal. And uh, that's what's Absolutely. happening. And what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing right now is that these people that are in uh, those particular age groups, and my father is a perfect example. He and I can talk for hours, literally on the phone about things that are going on in the world. And, uh, mm-hmm. You know, 10 years ago, it wouldn't have been like that. You know, he he was very, you know, people in that, my dad is 85, I believe. And, uh, you know, people generally are set in their ways. But now they're even talking amongst themselves about a lot of these awakening issues. So yes. it, we're seeing an awakening on a larger scale. Yes. And and so for where they're at in their, their time on this earth, I think they're doing a wonderful job, and, and the thing we got mm-hmm. to remind them of is we're we're going to take this and do something with it. Thank you, thank you for getting me to where I could then get to the point where I, could, you know, when I had to say so, I, I started to to step up and do my part, and that's what we got to do. And then we got, we're going to be doing that to the group behind us too. So don't forget, as we're, you know, I mean, because they're they're so much more advanced than we are. They have planets in 
well-developed signs that are really going to take this thing and make something of it. So I'm excited about that, too. So t- let's talk a little bit more about the, the transition. All right, so now Pluto is leaving Capricorn. Now what? Mm-hmm. Well, now, you know, what you want to do is is you don't ever want to forget because Pluto, I always tell people that Pluto's like a, uh, an uncle that uh, maybe doesn't have a lot of great habits, so to speak, um, and they come to live not for a week, but they come to live for 20 years in your house. You're going to know him when he leaves, um, and you're going to find things about him that are good and the ugly and whatever, but the lessons are so deep ingrained that you never forget them. That's the first thing we got to do. we got to make sure that the lessons are ingrained of Pluto and Capricorn, what we built, why we built it, how ugly it was, you know, and some of the stuff that we just were, were doing to each other and the planet. And, you know, so we don't want to forget any of those. But then you got to leave. You always got to leave room for where we're headed. And when we get into Aquarius, it's about freedom. It's about being that individual and creating from the individual's point of view, and and you know really making this place to where the masses, because Pluto, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Aquarius rules the masses, can can survive and get along and and really thrive and and whatever it is we create. So that's where we got to go, you know, and that's what we got to look at as we move forward, because we are getting closer. I thought we'd never get there when it first got into Cap Pluto first got into Capricorn, but we are getting closer now. Where you know we get, it goes into Aquarius. It, we really got to start thinking. All right, well, we're, what do we want it to look like, and what can it be? And because because I sure don't want to miss a, the, a mir- any miracles that'll be provided by the universe of you know us being able to uh, on a grand scale, lots and lots and lots of people um, have ways of life that are just unbelievable and truly free, just truly free. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a, a an article and a video on the N Five D YouTube channel. It's called Global Unity Project: What the World Needs Right Now. And uh, I, honestly, uh, well, all I do is I basically outline everything that's wrong and provide solutions uh, to help uh, resolve all of all of these issues. You know, money, government, everything. Um, and uh, for right. example, one of the, one of my ideas is that you know what we need to do now, first and foremost is you know obviously money and uh, government. Government, the etymology of government, govern to control, mente, is the mind to control the mind. So yes. we need to mind number control. one. Yep. Exactly. Get rid of uh, what we perceive as government, and and my idea would be to uh, replace it with a council of elders that represent every ethnicity and various ages, and they can be voted every month if we want to. As long as they're working mm-hmm. in the best interests of humanity, they're good. But once they stop doing that, they're fired. It's not like these two or four year terms that we have. Um, so, right. and and what I encourage on the video is like, okay. This isn't the way it has to be, but these are ideas that I'm putting out there. We what we need are more ideas on okay, this is what's going to happen. This is what's already happening. This is what can happen in the future. And I encourage people on the video and in the article, add to it. Take whatever I have, build upon it. Um remove anything you think is bad, replace anything that you think is good, but what, what we definitely what we definitely need is some kind of game plan and that's what I was trying to put out there when I when I created that video. And that I mean so. that, that's spot on for what really we need to be looking because yeah, we're realizing the bad and realizing we need to tear this thing apart and, and start over in a lot of areas, but that's the problem, Greg, is everybody wants to oh, this ain't no good and then they walk away. We got to rebuild this and and these yes. that's the projects that we need to be looking at. It's like, all right, well where can we go and are we going to be perfect? No, we're not, but let's start the process so when we get there We've tweaked it enough to where you know it's manageable and it's definitely something that can that can work. So I, I love that. I'm mean, out to get in there and, and and read that because to me that's what this is all about and doing something about where it is we're going, not just bitching about it. You know. Yeah, there's there, I mean there's so many different ideas that people can kick around and we can we can make this happen. But the problem is you know what we're seeing time and time and time again is that they're just putting a band aid over. You know, for example, like what I was talking about with uh, QE4, quantitative easing, that's just yeah. putting more money out into the economy. It's creating hyperinflation. It's not providing an answer. Um, it's just making yeah. the situation worse. And what we need to do is say, okay, you know, this all has to collapse. And as bad as it sounds, it's such a blessing the day that it does happen because it will give people um, an opportunity, especially in your community, to get together with everyone and to help rebuild the community and then work outward. And that's how it's yeah. going to happen, you know. It's 
it's going to happen on a large scale. And I'm, I welcome that day. You know, as 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 scary, and I hate using that word, but as as it may seem, it's a blessing. The day that you know all three of those institutions collapse. Yeah, because the, uh, from the beginning, the intent was never for all. It was for the few, and they disguised it. Um, and made you believe it was for you or it was for the good of the masses. And it never was. I mean, never, not one step along the way was it good for everybody. And no. you know, that's just the sad truth. So mm-hmm. now here's a, here's a question I have for you. And this is just a little mm-hmm. off topic, but I was curious. Um, so obviously there's higher forms of intelligence and other forms of intelligence out there. Um, now, if ETs were to use astrology, and every planet means a specific thing, you know, as Pluto being the destroyer. What would Earth be to an ET? I, I think Earth is love, if you want to know the truth, and, and that's something they mm-hmm. can't figure out. And so I think that that's where, we're, you know, we're here to really create, and they're trying to figure out how that happens and why. And so, you know, I, I look at Earth as it's the perfect scenario. I mean, look at the life force that happens here, and I think it's about creation, and that comes from love. So. Uh-huh. And you're now. I, I have an opinion that you know there, there's all sorts of different ideas on creation. Um, Zechariah mm-hmm. Sitchin believes that our DNA was genetically manipulated by the Anunnaki, and which mm-hmm. I believe because that would explain definitely um, the, the why certain codons are shut off and we're not capable of being everything that we we can be. But it doesn't yes. explain you know the the differences in ethnicities, RH values. Um, blood types A, B, A, B, and O, you know, possibility number two would be that we were seated here by various galactic nations, and within that premise, that does explain all the differences in ethnicities, blood types, RH values, languages, everything. I mean, Spanish could be the language of whatever uh, planet seated us here, not necessarily a language of our own, but an, a galactic language within itself. And possibility right. three would be a combination of both Sitchin and that we were seated here by various galactic nations. What's your opinion? I have um, I, I've thought about this a lot because I think about um, why some things uh, like I'm drawn to and I eat and they make me feel good and other people can't eat them and touch them. And, and I, I think that, you know, I, I always try to break it down to simplest of forms. And as I look at it, um, I, I really – my belief is that we, they they have us, uh, and they 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 make us different, um, and then they make what seems to be appealing one thing and what not appealing another thing, and and then they they uh, feed that to us. That I think that was all in the process of separating us from, like the physical form from the the soul or the non physical form, and then what they want to do is keep you or, or make you work as hard as you could, and they they pull from you all along the way of you trying to get back to that. And so, you know, if you're short or if you're fat or if you're tall or if you're man or if you're woman or if you're white or black or brown or um, I think all those things they knew, if they could get as many of those areas of like almost created that they could keep you then from get you getting back to yourself and all along the process they could suck the life out of you or suck the life force from you as you were like, oh, I'm not good enough or I'm not this and I'm not that. And and really in the end, everybody's good enough. Everybody, you know, but it's just a matter of us getting back to that. And so I think that is a perfect plan to make us all look a little different or make this look like what is in and that look like what's out. And so everybody had a little bit of both and, you know, and it caused fear and restriction mm-hmm. from the individual itself. They didn't have to put it out there. You did it to yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. You know, and and, okay. and the thing that that irks me, uh, you know, is is like some of these commercials, basically all the commercials where they always show the, you know, these these beautiful people and they're always yes. just, you know, we'll we'll take well, for example a uh, beer commercial. We'll say Bud Light yes. out of yes, our, just for arbitrary reasons. But um, right, right. You know, they, they're always saying, you know, in a party setting, everyone's good looking and happy and this and that. And what they're really saying is. You know, if you drink this this Bud Light, you're going to have these friends. You're going to look beautiful like these people. Yeah. And what they're saying is, you are basically inadequate, and uh, we don't yeah. recognize the light that's within you. Yes, 
that that's the farthest thing that we're going to consider is your life force or your ability to love or your ability to create. It's the farthest thing we're going to consider because you have to look like this, you have to wear this, mm-hmm. you have to have the, you know, and it's just so far from truly what is that. I think that's why they made us all different, and I think they did it for a reason, you know. And mm-hmm. each Definitely. each of the, yeah, each of the uh, different uh, ethnicities suffer at different levels at each time. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Are, are, so do you think that we're following a divine plan? And if so, what is it? I think that we initially were to follow a divine plan and we got, uh, we accepted or we, just in learning our lessons, I, th- I think that in the end, Greg, that um, we have to learn, we were to learn evil and we were to learn goodness. And, um we got tripped up along the way, so we have to go through the evil path a little deeper than maybe we'd like at times, and then other times we we get the path down goodness. But in the end, I think that's also we can truly understand just how much power we truly have to create. And I, you know, I think that you, you get it, and then you misuse it, and then you have to pay. And I just think we run through those cycles, but we're in that end cycle, the twenty six thousand year cycle, that we're done. I mean, we, we figured it out, and so you either going to get it this next twenty six thousand years, or you're not. And so we're in that end time of, all right, what is truly the meaning of life and, and what matters and, and who are we? You know, And I think we're down to that end game. Mm-hmm. Is there, now, is there a larger cycle outside of the 26,000-year cycle that you follow? Uh, I don't. I follow that one now because that one's been perplexing to me because as we look, I look through civilization. Like you said, we had the male-female. We had the rise of civilizations within those uh, cycles um, many a times over and over. We've had religious uh, um, sectors. Uh, they'd rise up with a, a hero or a, a god, half god, half man like. You know, we've had that happen several times. And so I'm just trying to figure this 26,000 year cycle out and just make sure that I, I get that. And so when I go to the next one, I, hopefully those lessons aren't the same, if that makes sense. So somebody could be on a, a 20 million year cycle. I'm not. I'm not going to deny that. That's not where I am at this point. I feel, you know. Uh huh. So. Yeah, that's. Well, I mean, God. What do you if think? You're to think of. Oh, well, you know, I, I definitely think there's a. Uh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name. Um, Egan, something. Not not Max Egan, but um. Max Egan, it, not a. It, no, it wasn't Max Egan, but there's there's a guy, maybe it was Igor or something, or I, I don't remember his name, but he was talking about um, these these uh, greater cycles that they were looking at in the core, uh, ice core samples, and he was showing how that there are, I think it's every 100,000 years, there's a, uh, we, we, we go into a warming spell, but that only lasts for about 10 to 15,000 years, then we go into an ice age again, for like seventy five eighty thousand years, and uh so these opportunities are really presented basically only once every twenty thousand years on 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 our planet um mm-hmm. because we're always under ice at that point um so uh, there are other cycles that are bigger and grander than the twenty six thousand year precession um cycle mm-hmm. so and 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 of course there's greater cycles than that that we're just totally unaware of about other uh, galactic um, and celestial objects that we have no idea even exist at this point in time. So, um, matter of fact, yeah. I just read an article about how they discovered all these new planets um, within our solar system that, you know, who knows exactly, you know, what they mean even in within astrology and how they influence us on a grander scale. But all we can do is really work with the, the planets that we have and uh, we, yeah. we can tell basically uh, at least get a game plan of what to expect and you know what we can do about it. Yeah, and I, I mean, I welcome more planets, and but, but then we got to go and uh, we got to do the due diligence of all right. We discovered a planet. What's going on in the planet today? You know, and then we got to start figuring out what that planet's definition uh, energetically is going to be. So I don't have any mm-hmm. problem with new planets, but I want to make sure we do the work from the humankind, in which is we study and make sure that we, you know, as the planet was found, just what happened and and you know, how we were dealing with things and, and then get a good definition of that planet. So now I, is, I mean, is there, I, you know, a, go ahead. It, well, is, is, is there any event or alignment in the near future that will help foster the, the, the current awakening on a larger scale that, you know, that we haven't talked about yet or. 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think uh, you look in astrology, the tenth house, which is our ability and our understanding um, to go get to the highest point of understanding in this life force or life life form. Um, and we have Pluto there right now. So I think we're coming to an understanding of physical plane uh, at its height, and I think that it's it's magnified with where Neptune's in its own sign. Um, the eclipses are, are moving in, in a nice point where they're uh, working on the first and the seventh house, and then they're going to move to the twelfth and the sixth house. And then, you know, I think we're in the sign of uh, the time of Aquarius where it's about taking it into tomorrow. So I think we're at a lot of end times. And, and I'm, when I mean end times, I'm not saying civilization is going to end, but end times of seeing things a certain way. I think they're over, and it's time for us to. Um, move forward in a new way, and, and this new way that I'm hearing is not what it is. is. You, you hear a lot of the new world order stuff, and you know this mm-hmm. is a new age, and this is new. I don't think those are right. You know, I, those are not where we're going because they don't feel good. They don't feel they feel restriction. I feel restricted still. So I think we're moving right. in the direction you and I are talking about, where our awakenings happen, but it's got to come from the individual. So uh, you know, we've got to wake up or help wake up the masses. It ain't just it's not just up to us, but we got to do our part. We are. Um, and then we got to allow the was the people awaken. We got to allow them to awaken because you know how you were 15 years ago, and what you right. had argued for or against. And I know what I was. So we have to allow that space for these people as they awaken. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I definitely agree. We, we we do have to awaken the masses, and we do have to allow them to. You know, I guess it, you know almost make it seem like it was their idea. <laughs> you know, that would probably be yes, easier. Yes, absolutely. Than- best way to do it make it seem like oh you know oh yeah that that wasn't my idea that was all you but um also to uh you know it's a, it's really 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 important to put that time in to do the inner inner work and uh, i i honestly can't express that enough there's so many things i i, I try to do even i i firmly believe that you know all all thoughts are energy and they go somewhere and there's times where i'll take i'll, I'll walk the beach and I'll smile at people as they're walking toward me, but inside I'm saying, I love you. And I'll do the same thing when I'm driving, too, if, if, while I'm not having road rage. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I'll also try to do that, you know, and send that, that energy of love. And these are some things that anyone listening right now, you know, you can do. Another thing you can do is just envision that you are this just big bubble energy of love and uh, anyone that comes within your bubble is absorbing that and uh just those thoughts when you put those thoughts out there that's already creating a difference so there's so many little things you can do that not only help work on yourself but help to work on others but now getting back to working on yourself you know there's many things that we can do and don't be afraid to experiment just because no one's ever tried it before doesn't mean you can't and here's another example um I've been buying this uh, pH uh, water. It's a pH of 9.0 alkaline water, and uh, I've been uh, and and there's the 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 train of thought that an alkaline body cannot get cancer, um, yeah. and most of our bodies are uh, acidic. So what I've been doing is I've been drinking that water, but not only doing that, but I also put um, ozone into the water. I have an ozone machine above my water cooler, and I add the ozone to it, and. Uh, and then I, I put the positive intentions and thought into it that m- all of my codons are open. Um, my pineal gland is open. My chakras are clear. And I put all this energy into the water before I drink it. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting on myself. But these are experiments that anyone can do, you know, as long as you're trying to better yourself and others and humanity. You know, there, there's really nothing bad you can do. But don't be afraid. The bottom line is don't be afraid to experiment in different ways, you know, because – once that hundredth monkey effect kicks in, say say I'm able to uh, turn on all my codons doing this, and I'm able to share that with the world, mm-hmm. the world will change. So don't be afraid to try different things, you know. And I might yeah, be looked and, at as crazy. I, I don't care. No, and, and I think uh, that you're. I'm exactly in the line with you. I, I've I've went about it a little differently, and I go, I always say, well, who said I'm wrong? You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I'm right, mm-hmm. but who says I'm wrong? And I think if we all can take what you just said. Throw in the who said I'm wrong. I'm, I'm going to just work. I'm going to be better <laughs> off because 
maybe maybe I'll learn that, all right, that doesn't work, but I'll know that doesn't work from a personal perspective, not because somebody told me that doesn't work. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And so, and, and so I think you're right on, and I think that's where all of us are trying to get. We have our own answers. We just got to get them, you know, just find them. And through, you know, trial and error is where you're going to get them the best. And so you doing all that, I think, is, uh, to me, that's, I mean, that that inspires me to, to get going a little more in what I'm doing because uh, I have the pH water. I do those things. I, you know, I drink a drink, green drink in the morning and I try to uh, let this heal me or let this keep me healthy or let, you know, let this open. And so I'm doing kind of the same thing just with different stuff. But, but I go with the, with the concept of who said I'm wrong anyway, you know, I, you know, I'm not, I may not be the brightest, but I'm also not the dumbest. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm uh-huh. going to work from that perspective. So definitely, definitely. You know, I, I posted this article I don't know, a few years ago on N5D about the the benefits of ozone, and uh, it just sparked me into thinking, okay, why can't I add this into my water, and why can't I add the yes. intentions? And and at the time, I think I, at the time I think I was originally when I started doing ozone water, I was drinking distilled water, but I went away from that because for me, it, it I I felt like I was losing my hair. Um, the, the distilled right. water was making me lose my hair and was coming out. Okay, you know, it seemed. But um, then I switched over to uh, spring water. But now, since then, I've switched over to this brand. It's called Levi, like Steve Vai, but L-E in front of it, Levi water. And it's a 9.0 alkaline water. And uh, I bought this ozone machine where I just put it in there for 10, 15 minutes and uh, good to go. So it's it's just, you know, try experimenting with anything. And, you know, and when people make a breakthrough, let other people know because that is the 100th monkey. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and the bigger the corporation that does it, the less I'm apt to look at it, I hate to say. Now, for the upcoming year, mm-hmm. uh, what would be the your best advice that you could give our listeners? If you don't already, I'd really work on loving thyself. Um because I think if you truly do that, I think you're going to start the empowering will really just like ooze out of you. And then you're going to take advantage of these uh, alignments that we have, which are for uh, transformation, which are for revealing hidden uh, re- cycles that are no no good for you or cycles that are restrictive. And um, I, I really I, I keep going back to you, Greg, and I can't say this enough. It's about opening up and finding who you are at that core. And and that's good enough. That is enough. That's what we need. Um, And get rid of these these, uh, hidden uh, audio tapes and videotapes that these, uh, you know, you're being fed of you're not enough. If you're not this, you're not, you know, uh, if you don't have this, you're not that. And get rid of those and just know that everything you have within you is, is all you need and get it out because you will accomplish what it is you came here to accomplish. If not, you're going to struggle. Mhm. Now I I have a great story. Um you know, as you know, being born, you know, the typical, you know, being raised as a typical boy in, you know, upstate New York, I was sh- shown every sport imaginable, played every one of them. Still love playing them all. But um, you know, y- y- you end up building up this this whole macho facade and uh y- y- most people are totally unaware of it, but um once my daughter was born it's funny because when people would ask when my ex was pregnant they'd say oh are you hoping for a boy or a girl honestly at the time i wanted a boy but as it turned out i would i wouldn't trade my daughter for all the sons in the world she's and this is the lesson i learned from her she she would just curl up in a little ball on my lap and look at me with her little puppy dog eyes and say in her little angel voice Daddy, can I watch a little football with you? <laughs> Instead of going to bed, I'd be like, "Sure, pumpkin, okay." And the next thing I knew, you know, five minutes later, she's running around doing everything else other than football, and she was manipulating yeah, she wasn't me. Watching football. <laughs> but the thing is, the whole underlying theme of that was is she took that whole macho image and crushed it. And I'm so yep. grateful for that that she showed me a side that I haven't seen of myself since I was a kid. And, I, you right. know, if I did have a son, I'm not sure if I would have seen that, honestly. Right, right. I mean, kudos to you for being open to a lesson or, you know, a, a new way of understanding. Because in the end, I have four children, and they teach you 
the weaknesses that you have. They teach you <laughs> the part of life that you missed. I mean, they bring it right to you, and it's right front and center, you know, and and it's up to the parent to be open and figure that out, you know. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, and before I let you go, too, I was just curious, who are your favorite astrologers? I like uh, Jeffrey Green. Um, he wrote uh, The Evolutionary Journey of the Soul, Pluto, The Evolutionary Journey of the Soul. He is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And um, he passed away. But anything you can get with him, you'll like. Um, Robert Hand is very good. Uh, I, I definitely like what he did. But my two favorite are uh, Grant Louie. Um, he figured out the Saturn Principle. Uh, that man understood that there is cycles to everything. He, he predicted his death. Um, he died of a brain wow. hemorrhage. And six uh, months before he passed away, he canceled, didn't do any appointments. He knew. And, um, you know, I, I'm i not a big guy, and, uh, you know, I, we're all going to go, and I'm not a big guy saying, all right, well, I know exactly when. But he figured it out that the cycles are there, and then you just have certain times when – there's endings, and there's going to be three or four that match up, and that could be a good time to go. And he knew that. Um, and then I have a wow. lady. I'm, I live in Charlotte. I live in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, and I uh, have a lady here, um, Gabrielle Hardman, who she really got me going. She's an Aquarius, and she um, she touched me in a way that uh, the, the, most individuals don't get. That um, she she just just um, she spoke to my soul, and it was right to my soul, and I couldn't believe there was somebody that knew me. And she didn't have a clue to who the hell I was, and and we clicked. It kind of like you and I talk, Greg. Um, she, she's mm-hmm. uh, I don't even know if she's still alive. She don't pick the phone up anymore, but she was just an amazing lady. That just she just got it. I mean, she knew astrology, and she could pick somebody out in a crowd, and she was dead on. And um, she she uh, as well as Grant Louie, and I think the other two I mentioned, Robert Hand and Jeffrey Green. I think they used astrology for what it was meant, and that is. Uh, prepare yourself for the cycles that are come. Don't, you know, I, I said that uh, Grant Lee predicted, uh, I, I hate to, I said that, I, I just think he saw the cycle and he knew what was coming and uh, there's a bigger plan and, and, you know, I think astrology teaches us that and just prepare yourself for that cycle that's coming. That's a lot of what I try to talk about and it's, you know, if you can do those things, I think life really unfolds in the manner that it should. So. Mm-hmm. Now, um, there's there's a guy that has a book out on how you're signed. You can tell what sign a person is just by their features. And here's a great example. Uh, for those who know the early Metallica, James Hetfield, um, he uh, he kind of looks, there's some pictures of him where he kind of looks like uh, uh, the, the cowardly lion. So take a wild guess what his sign He's is. He's a Leo. He is a Leo. Is he a Leo? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah. he is. There's certain characteristics that each sign has that shows yes. you um, what sign you are. I, th- I found that really fascinating. I um, I uh, w- we go out and stuff. I'll I'll mess with uh, the waitresses or whatever just for fun. And it's amazing how accurate it is once you and you've done it enough because I've talked to you enough. Once you know the attributes or the energies of a sign, you really can start picking out uh, what a person the sign they are. It really is uh, effective, and, and it's a lot of fun too because people look at you like. How the hell did you do that? Yes, yes. Um, and I, I've done that myself, and it's really fun guessing. Uh, when, you, when you see certain people, you, you know basically what they are. And I think that's part of why certain elements click, too, because you see a familiarity within the facial features of certain people that just click with your sign. So I think they're yes. kind of tied in uh, yeah. together. Yeah. I, now, I you were mentioning... Right uh, on and, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, uh, well, I was just saying that I think that if you can get around somebody and, like you said, look at their body structure, their features, and then just watch them for just a short period of time, you'll you'll be pretty damn accurate of how you you know the sign you pick for them. <laughs> you'll be pretty damn close. So, yeah. Uh, generally speaking, I, I'm I'm what I'll end up doing is I'll say you're either this or that. I'll, I'll limit it down yes. to two. But if it's that and not this, chances are there was something really strong within. Their their birth chart that was probably that I was thinking absolutely. of. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. The rising sign has a lot to do with that. Yes, that their sun and rising are different. Then yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now you're mentioning about uh, Robert Hand, the one that predicted his death. Uh, Grant Louie. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Louis, uh, yeah. Well, 
okay. Um, I, I, I firmly believe that we have – it's kind of like you're driving down a highway and you have all these exit signs, and you can get off on any exit, but it's, it's ultimately your choice. Now, I think it was in 2007 I was diagnosed with a stage 3 melanoma on my back, and usually when it gets to stage 3 or greater, it's, it's not good. But um, right. I, yeah, I had had that removed, and uh, I I didn't do chemo, I did not do any chemo or anything else like that. I just had it cut out, and that was it. And uh, they mm-hmm. say that once you you go five years, I believe uh, you're out of the woods, and it's been gosh eight years now. So I'm out wow. of the woods on it. But that that was that was one of my exit points. But you know, I, if I had if I had checked out in uh, 2007. We, uh, we obviously wouldn't be talking right now, nor would there be in 5D or anything else. So, uh, you know, I th- do, do you subscribe to that that theory that we have exit points and we can check out at certain points in our life? Oh yeah, I, I you know I can tell you over my life that I've died several times in like way of believing, way of thinking, way of life itself. Um, but the physical body stayed. So mm-hmm. you know we all do that. We have we have death points uh, as we go through life and. And, you know, if you go back and look, you've totally changed, uh, you know, in a short period of time and how you saw things by either a sudden event or by just, you know, you being the change and, and, and you know, it happening. So I definitely think we have def- plenty of death points throughout our life. And, and those things are good because it clears the way then for opening for new. And so, you know, you must look at them like, like you did in 07. I never knew that about you, Greg, but... I, I, you know, I've always felt you're a healer, um, and we never talked about that. But I feel like you have the ability to self heal and heal others, whether you know it or not. I've always felt that about you. Um, yeah, and and that's why I think a lot of people are drawn to you. So you probably just self healed at the time. You know, you had the <laughs> they removed it, and you said this ain't happening. I'm, you know, I have the power, and I'm, I choose to, you know, I'm, I'm moving on. So I don't know how what your state but, of mind was back then, but. Um, actually, I, I uh, what I wanted to do was um, to to buy cards for every major occasion for my daughter, and then record myself reading them, and then have my ex-wife give them the card, like for on her birthday or for whenever she gets married down the road. I would have a card for that, and I'd read it and congratulate her. And she said, wow. "I I will not." My ex-wife said, "I will not do that. That would be too traumatic for her." And it, it really bummed me out that she wouldn't do that for me. And I, I would have found somebody else to do it if she wasn't going to. But um, sure. as it turned out, I beat the cancer. And I asked her a few years, I asked, I asked my daughter a few years ago, I said, would you have liked that? And she said, yeah, I would have. So well, I think you she know, would cherish that. She would look forward to that, I think, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Now, um, as getting back to the um, these exits that we have as we travel down life, um, mm-hmm. Like you were mentioning, uh, I think there are in a parallel universe. You and I probably have died in 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 various situations. There's been times where everyone listening has been probably close to a situation where it it could have been the end of your life as well. But obviously, you're listening to us, and we're all still here. But that could have been mm-hmm. one of your exits that you're listening, you know, to those who are listening and. Um, here we are, and we're here definitely for a reason, and I think it's it's really to to bring humanity together and to make this world, you know, as, as great of a place as we can while we're still here. Absolutely, and I, and and that you know the pain and suffering, the times that I went through that I totally altered who I was and what I was, got me to my understanding today, and I have, I'm so grateful for that. You know, no matter how traumatic it was, I'm so grateful for that, and and. You know, glad to be here, and I, you know, I think you're full of life. So to know in '07 that happened, uh, to me that that's just that, that's amazing, and that's what life's about. It's about go working through those things or going through those things, and and coming out the other side with such a perspective that's you know that really brings everybody else up. You know. <laughs> Thank you. You know, mm-hmm. one of, one of my favorite topics is the Pluto generations because it shows mm-hmm. you how and why large groups of similar aged people think and act the way they do. Now, for those people listening, look up where Pluto is on your birth chart, and that will be your generational group. Uh, Jim mm-hmm. and I are both Pluto in Virgo, and we have children with Pluto in Scorpio. And as it turns mm-hmm. out, there are some similar energies that bring both groups together, despite the generational gaps. So, Jim, I was thinking, 
and we talked about this before we came on air, perhaps next month I could get you back on N5D Radio and really go deep into the Pluto generations and perhaps do a whole show on it. What do you think? I would absolutely love to do that. I, I think we could uh, really uh, if we could get people to call in. I think we'd really touch people because I think they'd have an understanding that they definitely don't have it at this point, but you and I, with the work we've done, I think we'd have a fun time doing that, so I'd love it. Definitely. And on that note, uh, we are at the end of our show, Jim. So would you like to tell our listeners how to uh, get in touch with you? Yeah, um, website's uh, ypi2012.com. You can get me um, uh, on YouTube, Panther Jim 1995 You can uh, get the information that you need to get a hold of me there. I'd love to chat with you. Um, Greg, every time I talk to you, I get a bunch of new subscribers, so I appreciate that. Uh, I did not do a Cancer Full Moon video today, Greg. We uh, figured mm-hmm. we'd be on the show, and I uh, figured everything would come out that need needed to come out. So uh, this Cancer Full Moon Day, I, it's all about you tapping into your core, what it is you know, and taking action from that perspective. And I thought that show would do just that. And I felt like we've done that, so um, I appreciate it. Oh, we covered a lot of ground. You. <laughs> a lot, a lot more than I thought. <laughs> Yeah, we covered a ton of ground, and I, I really do. Yeah. You're 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 my favorite guest to have on the show, and it's really a pleasure to keep bringing you back on N5D Radio. So you know, as always, time flies when we do a show, and uh, yep. I can't look, I can't wait to bring you back next month um, to 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 do that Pluto Generation show. I'm excited, and uh, I, I again I appreciate the invites because uh, I think the world of you and what you're doing is spot on for what this world needs right now. So thank you for everything. Thank you, brother. So that's going to wrap up tonight's show. Until the next time, I wish everyone love, peace, and abundance in everything that is good in life. Namaste, everyone.